and then they respond, okay, you're hired, and then like two seconds later, you're fired.
2021 season for the Sioux Falls Sunfish after a three-day break for the All-Star Game and after having played already 17 games in the second half of the season, the Sunfish just have 15 more to try and capture the Clark Division second half championship in their inaugural season. They're two games back of the Fremont Moo after dropping two last weekend before the All-Star break. And now they have a tough challenge in the next four days. Actually, next six, if you even look to the next series. The Sunfish this weekend host the Souris Valley Sabre Dogs of the Lewis Division before having a two-game series against the first half of the Clark Division winners, Western Nebraska Pioneers. But tonight, it's game one of four against the Sabre Dogs. Hello, fans. David Coyer bringing you all of the action tonight on the Sioux Falls Sunfish Radio Network and the, well, updated and improved Sunfish live stream on YouTube. You opened up the broadcast and are back on it with the new dugout cam. Thank you to our producer, cameraman, scoreboard, operate everything, Sean Henley. To my left, he's been with us all season, and he has just done everything in his power to make these webcasts enjoyable for all of you at home. So now we have the new dugout cam and the nice ticker underneath. You can see some of the starting lineups, but I'll read them to you anyway, as it's the 11-6 Sabre Dogs against the 11-6 Sunfish. Declan Buckle will lead it off for the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. He's at shortstop tonight, followed by Alan Greer and Taylor Justice in the two and three spots. Drew Miller will be batting cleanup for the Sabre Dogs at the designated hitter spot. Jordan Williams, Cullen Hannigan, Ethan Moore at the 6 7 8, or excuse me, the 5 6 7. Gunnar Margren and Reese Anderson close things out. And on the first pitch from Andrew Garcia, it's a fastball that hits Declan Buckle. First pitch, 637 here at Karis Park. We should just start putting that on the schedule as the first pitch time because, hey, we've started at 637 for the past several games. Actually, all last weekend it was 637 against the Moo, but Declan Buckle gets hit by a pitch. And the first man is on against all-star relief pitcher. Even though he's a starter for the Sunfish, he came in and closed the all-star game for the Clark Division, Andrew Garcia. 88-mile-an-hour fastball off the outside corner to Alan Greer. Makes it a 1-0 count. Garcia was just the guest on the Fish Tank podcast today. It's now out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. So throw over to first is late. When he was on there talking about his experience in Casper this past week. A fastball gets to the backstop from Declan Beers as it brushes back Greer. Buckle will take second. So not the best start for Garcia, who usually is quick with his work and can go three up, three down in the first inning. Garcia on the season, making his 10th appearance as a Sunfish, his ninth start. Already behind 2-0 to Alan Greer. He'll call time and just get on the same page with Declan Beers. Garcia, the righty out of the University of Antelope Valley, 6'1", 190. He's also 6-1 on the season. We established that on the Fish Tank Pod today. 6-1, making him the winningest sunfish in history. Of course, a short history as this is the inaugural season, 2.29 ERA, 47 innings pitched, 47 strikeouts, 29 walks. The 2-0, it's a fastball right down the heart of of the plate for a strike. The Sabre Dogs wearing their red hats with red uniforms, blue Sabre Dogs across the chest, blue numbers on the back, a dark blue. And I think those are gray pants. They are gray pants. Here's the 2-1 from Garcia to Alan Greer. Checks back at second quick, kicks, and delivers. Goes with the changeup. It just misses high. It's 3-1. Garcia, last Friday against the Fremont Moo, went seven innings, allowed just one run, six hits, three walks, four strikeouts in the 3-1 Sunfish win. That's the last time the Sunfish have won as they would lose the next two to the Moo on Saturday and Sunday. Fastballs chopped over to Benito Garcia at short. Fields it off the hop, throws it to Zeph Hoffpower for out number one. Declan Buckle makes his way over to third. 
Dane Frazier out in left, Mitch Stroh in center, Gannon Thompson in right for the Sunfish, Norris McClure at his home at, in the hot corner at third. Benito Garcia hasn't started anywhere but shortstop this season. JT Mix at second, Zeff Hoffpower at first with Declan Beers catching tonight. All-star Will Olson getting the night off after starting at catcher for the Clark Division. Curveball drops in on the inside corner to Taylor Justice for strike one. Justice on the season, 304 batting average, six doubles, no triples or home runs, 10 RBIs, 12 walks. For the Agora Hills, California native, he fouls one off to the right side netting that actually goes underneath, I think, and got to some fans over there. 91 on the radar gun, and Justice is down 0-2. Last time he had a plate appearance was on the 18th, so Sunday. Went 1-4, for four, scoring a run in the 11-3 victory against the Western Nebraska Pioneers. Here's the 0-2. Curve ball, gets him rung up at the knees, got him looking. So with a runner on third... Andrew Garcia now has two away against the Sabre Dogs. It'll be designated hitter Drew Miller from Pryor, Oklahoma, the 6'2 lefty out of Wichita State University. 265 average, three doubles, five home runs. Swings at a curve ball in the dirt for strike one. 21 walks, 30 strikeouts. One for three on Sunday, scoring two runs, had a walk and a strikeout. The Sunfish wearing their all whites with their black hats, orange S, teal F, teal brims, white jerseys, orange Sioux, teal faults. Change up inside is fouled off, and it's 0-2. Orange numbers on the back, orange left sleeve, teal right, white pants with the black trim down the sides. So Garcia, after pitching on Tuesday, pitched one inning of relief as the Clark Division took a late game lead, a slow ground ball over to Garcia. He's up and throwing, and it is in time at first base for out number three. But Garcia would come in and close out the game, get the save in the All-Star game, the Clark Division win. And after hitting Declan Buckle on the first pitch thrown in the game, Garcia goes three up, three down, as the Sabre Dogs remain scoreless, the Sunfish have their first at bats in the bottom of the first inning when we return. The Sunfish, after hitting the first batter on the first pitch of the game, go three up, three down afterwards and keep the Sabre Dogs scoreless. We'll see what they can do with their first at-bats here in the bottom of the first inning. Doing so will be 
Benito Garcia leading off, followed by Mitch Stroh and Norris McClure. Zeph Hoffpower will be batting cleanup today out of first base, while Declan Beers will be batting fifth. Gannon Thompson, Jesus Licon, Dane Frazier, and JT Mix will close out the lineup for the Sunfish against Shane Sinclair out of Glasgow, Montana. Spokane Falls Community College. Seems like there's a lot of Spokane Falls pitchers and players alike in this league. First pitch of fastballs rolled over to third. Ethan Moore is up and firing. And the first pitch of the game is a ground out to Benito Garcia. Mitch Stroh out of Augustana University batting second. But Sinclair, 2-1 and one on the season through 12 appearances, just making his second start of the season. 33 innings pitched, 19 strikeouts, 22 walks allowed. He has not pitched against Sioux Falls this season. He made his Sabre Dogs debut back on May 26. He drops a change up in on the inside corner for strike one. But didn't play in that three game series here at Karras Park in which the Sunfish took two out of three against the Sabre Dogs. But he's making his second start of the season and already has one out. Mitch Stroh fouls one off, it's 0-2. That foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, Keg Chicken. Mitch Stroh, 271 average, 16 hits. One of them a double, one of them a home run. That home run coming last week against the Hastings Sodbusters. Eight RBIs, five walks, 12 strikeouts. He missed a, he's missed a bunch of the season due to some injuries. Fights off a curveball outside down the first base line. It's foul. Would have been ball one. Instead, he just had a nice defensive swing chasing the breaking ball outside. He went 0 for 4 against Fremont in Sunday's loss. Sunfish were up 5 to 2 going into the ninth inning as Stroh is rung up on a breaking ball outside. He'll have a couple words for the home plate umpire here, but we'll turn his head quickly and walk back to the Sunfish dugout. Two outs, Norris McClure batting third is up. But in that game on Sunday, the Sunfish had a three-run lead going into the top of the ninth inning. The Moo would score four unanswered before the Sunfish would score one of their own in the bottom of the ninth. McClure grounds the first pitch. He sees up the middle into Declan Buckle's chest, and he'll run it out. The throw to first is not in time, and first man is aboard for the Sunfish. The first hit allowed this game goes to the Sunfish on a ground ball right up the middle to Declan Buckle. Zaf Hoffpower is now up, 269 average on the season, 29 for 108 through 30 games. A double and a home run are his extra base hits, 14 RBIs, 26 walks. Went four for five on Sunday, one of two Sunfish to have three or more hits. Slider misses low and away, it's 1-0. and oh. Himself and Dane Frazier each had at least three hits, both of them the first time this season. Four for five, scoring two runs. His only out was a strikeout. Takes a change up high. It's called a strike. Jordan Williams, Reese Anderson, Alan Greer from left to right in the outfield for the Sabre Dogs. Ethan Moore, Declan Buckle at third and short, respectively. Gunnar Margren at second. There goes McClure before the pitch is thrown. Sinclair will fire it. It gets away from Margren. Rolls into shallow center field, but McClure was being stood over. Couldn't pop up quickly, and I don't think he would have wanted to anyway. It's a stolen base for McClure. And Sinclair didn't even get the pitch off. He was sitting there for a long time and sat in the stretch. And McClure just took off thinking he had the timing down and Sinclair had McClure as a sitting duck, but the throw was just low and away, and Margaret couldn't get a glove on it. One and one count to Hoffpower. Swings through a curveball. It's one and two. Taylor Justice is at first with Colin Hannigan calling the signs for Sinclair behind the dish. Two outs. Still scoreless here in the bottom of the first inning. A one-two count to Zeph Hoffpower. 
Sinclair checks back in McClure at second before kicking and delivering. Slider low and away. Off power went. So two strikeouts for Shane Sinclair, but he let up a hit. And McClure's stranded at second, and we're scoreless after one from Karis Park. Back on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. That's the one thing when Andrew Garcia's on the mound. It's a quick break in between innings. He only takes a couple pitches to get warm even early on in the game. He's also quick with his work as well. He's already got his glove up, winding and delivering against Jordan Williams. Fastball jams Williams over to JT Mix at second. A quick scoop and throw. And just like the first batter of the game, Declan Buckle, this batter is done after just one pitch, except Williams grounds out. It'll be Cullen Hannigan, the catcher for the Sabre Dogs. Last time the Sabre Dogs were in town, game went to extra innings. It was the first time before, and it was the only time until Sunday that the Sunfish had gone into extra innings here at Karis Park. Fastball on the outside corner, 91 on the radar is called a strike. But it went into extras, and there was a two-run triple. It's a curveball gets away from Garcia, sails over the head of Hannigan for ball one. And it was in that game that, if I'm not mistaken, actually I'll quick go check my notes just to make sure that I'm correct. But there is a two-run triple that put the Sabre Dogs ahead in the ninth. Slider low and away, swung on and missed. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes. The pitch, slider low and away. It's two and two. Yeah, it was in the 10th inning. Colin Hannigan, just wanted to make sure it was him, had a two-run triple. I would put the Sabre Dogs ahead over the Sunfish, and it looked like the game was over. But in the bottom of the 10th inning, the Sabre Dogs would intentionally walk Declan Beers, who lets a ball get away from him. A curveball high and away again over the head of Hannigan. It's three balls and two strikes. But with the bases loaded, Declan Beers would double, tying up the ball game. An intentional walk to Zeff Hoffpower would lead to Norris McClure. Fastball low and away is fouled off by Hannigan, and it's still a full count. But Norris McClure in his first game as a Sunfish would draw the walk with the bases loaded and will have a walk-off walk to take the series against Sewers Valley. The 3-2 misses away and Cullen Hannigan draws the one-out walk. That's his 20th base on balls this season. The beer batter, Ethan Moore. He's playing at third today. He's now up with a runner on one out. We're still scoreless here in the top of the second. 203 batting average, four doubles, two triples, six home runs. 
34 RBIs. He's walked seven times, but struck out 29. Fouls off the first pitch he sees, a 91 mile an hour fastball. And that foul ball is presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. On Sunday, Moore would go one for five, scoring a run. While driving in four off of his grand slam. Curveball misses high over the head of Moore. It's one and one. Garcia, who it took him a little bit on Friday to find the groove with the curveball, he was telling me. Well, he seems to have lost it again as all of the breaking balls that he's really thrown have missed over the heads of the batters, or at least in the right-handed batter's box. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Change up, fouled off. It's 1-2. and two. But so it was Garcia, Adonis Forte, and Will Olson who would enjoy the all-star spectacular festivities in Casper, Wyoming this week. Will Olson with hitting the home run derby on Monday. He could only get one over and didn't make it past the first round. And then it was Olson and Forte who would actually start for the Clark Division on Tuesday. High ball to left center. Calling off Frazier is Mitch Stroh who'll make the catch for out number two. Garcia would come in and close out the game for the Clark Division as they would get the win thanks to the save. Garcia has only pitched twice now in relief this season, once in a game at Wheat City and now at the All-Star Game. Gunnar Margren now up with two outs and a runner on first. 381 batting average through 13 games. Takes a fastball that bounces away from Declan Beers high up the back netting. Time is now called as Cullen Hannigan took second on the wild pitch. One thing that Declan Beers struggles on just a tad when he's catching is keeping balls in front of him, getting a glove on him. It's the ones that's in the dirt, which Andrew Garcia usually doesn't miss low, but tonight he is. But Declan struggles with knocking down. A fastball paints the outside corner to the lefty Margarin. Out of San Clemente, California. Lefty goes to Golden West Junior College in his 14th game as a Sabredog. Hasn't played since Saturday where he went one for four with a walk. Runner on second, two outs, scoreless ball game. Fastball right down the pipe is swung on and missed. It's one and two. While the curveball may not be working, Garcia's fastball is right at its usual 90 miles an hour. He's topped out tonight at 92, but we talked about on the fish tank today that this season we've seen him hit 94, and it's, it seems like even the later he gets, the harder he throws it. Shakes off a sign from Beers. Sets at the stomach. Doesn't even check back at second. Kicks and delivers. Curveball misses just a bit low. Laid off by Margaret. Two and two now with two outs. Only one hit today. It was to Norris McClure in the bottom of the first. The Sabredogs have had two base runners. Declan Buckle was hit on the first pitch. Colin Hannigan drew a full count walk. Garcia checks back and delivers the 2-2. Slider catches the corner. And that's strikeout number two. Both of them looking for Andrew Garcia. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base once again. And the Sabre Dogs are scoreless after two. We'll head to the bottom of the second right after this.
Bottom of the second inning from Karis Park between the Sunfish and the Saber Dogs on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. Declan Beers, Gannon Thompson, Jesus Lee Cohn do up in this inning. The Sunfish have one hit on the day. Norris McClure, who's still second, was left stranded out there. Beers with his teal bat fouls one off on the shin. It was an off-speed pitch right into the back left shin. Foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. Out of Laverne, Minnesota, Beers. Newly signed Augustana Viking as of Sunday. Will be calling Karis Park home for the rest of his collegiate career, most likely. Slider drops in on the inside corner. It's 0-2 to Beers. 275 batting average through 28 games. Three doubles, a triple, and a home run. 12 RBIs, 19 walks. Beers went 0 for 5 in Sunday's loss against the Moose, striking out once. The 0-2 is a slider in. Almost hits Beers. It's 1-2. and two. And now that 0 for 5 is slightly deceiving. Some of these guys who in those games last weekend or even just all of last week who might have gone hitless in a game, it's very deceiving. The Sunfish have been hitting the ball really well or at least making strong contact. A fastball runs low and in. It's 2-2. Two and two. And Declan... Well, I mean, you go back to Saturday's loss. He went one for five with a double, and that double coming late in the game, bottom of the ninth inning, in fact. During that game, he just hit balls really hard but hit them directly at Tyler Push, a fastball called strike three on the inside corner. And the top of the or bottom of the second starts off the way the bottom of the first ended with a strikeout. Two strikeouts looking for the Sunfish today, and... The same amount for the Sabre Dogs. Trying to get a feel for this strike zone. Alex Shoemaker is out in the field, umpiring, and behind the plate. I've never caught this umpire's name, but as I'm told, some Fremont Moo players like to call him Bubbles. Slider misses away. It's 1-0 and to Gannon Thompson. So if I ever say Bubbles throughout the broadcast, it's most likely in reference to the home plate umpire. Gannon Thompson, Michigan State Spartan from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Takes a slider on the outside corner. Call the strike this time. It's one and one. 247 average through 27 games as a Sunfish. Four doubles, two home runs, 21 RBIs, 27 walks. On 0 for 4 on Saturday with three strikeouts. Rolls over one, but foul into the Sabre Dogs dugout. Gannon had his four-game hitting streak snapped on Saturday. He had gotten a hit every game since Tuesday. A lot of one-run losses for the Sunfish, though. The one and two is a slider low and away. No chase by Thompson. It's now two and two. But Monday's game against the Moo, the Sunfish were shut out for the first time in franchise history. one nothing. Then on Tuesday, it was 11 to 10 as Thompson rips this one into the Sabre Dogs dug or bullpen, excuse me. Just patched the outstretched glove of someone in the Sabre Dogs bullpen up and throwing. Not sure if they're warming up or just stretching a little bit. Still two and two. Then two big wins for the Sunfish and Hastings, eight to nothing and 11 to four. Breaking ball misses outside and Thompson's got the count full. Then a 3-1 to one win for the Sunfish on Friday. Another close game. Saturday and Sunday were both one-run ball games. 8-7 to seven on Saturday. 8-6 to six on Sunday. Or I guess that's two runs. My bad. Still was a close game throughout the entire game. Change up misses in. It's a full count walk to Gannon Thompson with one out. I guess not necessarily all one-run games, but still very close games and tough losses for the Sunfish. They were coming back in the ninth inning on Saturday 
And we're halted with the runner in scoring position in the bottom of the ninth inning, and they would end up going down one. And then, of course, surrendering that lead in the ninth on Sunday. Jesus Lee Cohn takes a fastball right down the heart of the plate for strike one. He's batting 333 on the season through 30 games. Eight doubles, two triples, no home runs. That long ball, he's had a couple that have been close, but just missing clearing the wall. Thompson takes off on the 0-1. Lee Cohn pushes this down the first base line, but it's hooking foul. No balls and two strikes to Lee Cohn who had a pinch-hitting attempt late in the bottom of the 10th inning on Sunday. Struck out. But on Saturday, went two for three with two runs and a walk. Had a double in that game. 0-2 count. One out, runner on first. Still scoreless between the Sabre Dogs and the Sunfish. Lee Cohn bloops one over the head of Declan Buckle. Gannon Thompson had to hold up because he thought Buckle was going to make the over-the-shoulder catch. And off speed caught the end of the bat from Lee Cohn, and now there's two on for the first time in the game. The second hit of the game for the Sunfish goes to Jesus Lee Cohn, and we'll see Dane Frazier. 300 batting average for Dane. Five doubles, 17 RBIs, 25 walks. He was one of the two on Sunday who had career games. Zaf Hoffbauer had four hits. Dean had three for the first time this season. In fact, in the last three games that Dane has hit in, he has six hits. Both runners take off. The throw down to second. Lee Cohn is hung up between first and second. Gannon Thompson shuffling down the line. The throw. Lee Cohn is still being caught up. The throw now at home as Thompson takes off. The tag will be late. Hannigan was trying to get the swiping tag. Lee Cohn was doing his best in the rundown, was getting close to second. The throw was late, and the Sunfish are on the board. The double steal works to perfection. Thompson and Lee Cohn both credited with the stolen base, and it's 1-0 Sunfish here in the bottom of the second inning. Thompson took off. He's a bit quicker on the base pass than Lee Cohn, and Hannigan... Threw it down, the throw got there as Lee Cohn was just about halfway between first and second. And Lee Cohn had the wherewithal to stop and try and get in a run down to score the run. Frazier's now down 0-2 as he takes a breaking ball at the chest across the plate. The first pitch was a strike to Frazier and with one out, there's a runner on second. But six for 12. In the last three games he's played, he's been on a bit of a hot streak. Grounds one straight back at Sinclair, gets a glove on it, and then it'll fall. He stabbed at it, got a piece of it, and it would just slowly fall in front of Declan Buckle. Gunnar Margren was charging on it, but couldn't get a glove on it either. Another hit for the Sunfish, puts runners at the corners with just one out for JT Mix. From Farmer's Branch, Texas. Did you know JT's from Texas? It was a little joke from Will Olson last week. JT, like myself, likes is proud of where he's from. He likes to announce it to people. A rare take on the first pitch for JT is a fastball runs a bit high, ball one. JT, 253 average, three doubles, 12 RBIs, 23 walks. 14 strikeouts. JT very aggressive at the plate. He doesn't take too many pitches. Throw over to first. No tag to Dane Frazier from Taylor Justice. Sunfish score first here in the bottom of the second inning, and they have a 1-0 lead over the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. These teams will see each other, including today, seven times in the Last games of the season, slider misses away. The throw down will get Dane Frazier as Lee Cohn stays at third. Dane comes up and kind of looks over at third like, why didn't anybody go? Hannigan just throws the strike down to second. As there's now 
two strikes, or excuse me, two outs now in the bottom of the second. The delivery from Sinclair buckles the knees of JT, but it still misses. It's three balls and no strike to JT Mix. Sunfish lead the Expedition League and caught stealing. It's not the stat that you want to be leading in, but when you're as aggressive as they are on the base pass, and it'll happen. JT swings on the 3-0 pitch, a curveball across the plate but misses. Three balls, one strike to the Sunfish second baseman. That's the 54th time a Sunfish has been caught on the bases. A high chopper down the third base line will be foul. And JT is behind, or now has the full count, three and two. But the Sunfish lead the Expedition League with 175 stolen bases. Eight ahead of the Sabre Dogs at 167. And of course, the Sunfish, that was just coming into tonight's game. They have a few already. The payoff to Mix is ripped down the left field line. That's going to fall for a base hit. Lee Cohn is going to score. Mix was had a hard round around first, was heading to second, but the arm of Jordan Williams proved just a bit too frightening. He'll stay at first with the RBI single. We're back to the top of the order with Benito Garcia who in his first at-bat, the game was scoreless, and, well, now it's 2-0 Sunfish early on in game one of four against the Sabre Dogs here at Karras Park. Benito grounded out to third his first at-bat. And with two outs, as JT Mix on first, had, uh, takes a fastball right down the heart of the plate for strike one. It's an exciting time in sports. The NBA Finals just finished up on Tuesday. Bucks in six. All you Sunfish listeners know I'm from Milwaukee and love everything about it. And it's insane that for the first time in 50 years, Milwaukee has a championship. Mix is off on the throw, and Colin Hannigan's throw is down. Mix will swim out of the way. Colin Hannigan had another strike. It was a tough tag for Margren as... Swimming out there is JT Mix. We'll have a coach for the Sabredogs coming out talking with Alex Shoemaker about that one. Head coach Alex Miklos. That was a quick conversation with Shoemaker. As it's one strike to Garcia and JT gets another stolen base on the season. Sunfish leader in stolen base is Jonathan Brandon. No longer here in Sioux Falls. He went home after playing in 30 games for the Sunfish this summer. The 0-1 is ripped straight into the glove of Ethan Moore at third. Four out number three. Garcia pulling it a bit too much tonight. But the Sunfish score two and take an early 2-0 lead. Two runs off three hits, no errors. One left on base. It was the single by Dane Frazier that scored Gannon. Or actually, it was the double steal that would score Gannon Thompson. And JT Mix drives in Jesus Lee Cone. It's 2 nothing Sunfish after two.
Back in the top of the third inning, the Sunfish scored two in the bottom of the second and hold a 2-0 lead over the Souris Valley Sabredogs. It'll be Reese Anderson getting his first time facing Andrew Garcia in tonight's contest. Anderson out in center field today. Hasn't had much action. The first pitch from Garcia comes inside as Anderson was showing bunt, but is instead hit in the ribs. Alex Shoemaker shows that he did he did pull back and there was not a foul ball. So two hit batters for Garcia today. Both of them on the first pitch of the at-bat. Can't even get Anderson's stats out there. For those of you curious, he was batting 269. Well, still is. Three doubles, four RBIs, nine walks, n 10 strikeouts on the season. And he gets a free base on the hit by pitch. We go back to the top of the order to the other guy who got hit on one pitch, Declan Buckle. Sunfish aren't known for, well, walking opponents or hitting them as a fastball misses low and away to Declan Buckle. Didn't have much time to get through Buckle's stats his first time up. 258. As the ball gets away from Declan Beers, he'll chase after it. It'll ricochet off the backstop. Ball two as Anderson has taken second base on the wild pitch. Two balls, no strikes to Buckle. Hasn't played since the 14-3 to Sabredog win against the Badlands Big Sticks on July 15th where he went one for two with an RBI. Garcia checks back at second. Kicks and delivers. Fastball is lined into the glove of a jumping JT Mix. The toss to Benito Garcia. A double play. JT Mix's walk-up song. I wish I was a little bit taller, but right there he showed he was a baller. Jumped up and got that one and tossed it to Benito Garcia to get Reese Anderson on the double play. Two outs now here in the top of the third. It'll be Alan Greer who grounded out to Benito Garcia his last time up. He'll ground straight back to Garcia again. A hard hit ball into the glove of Zeph Hoffpower. And just like that, leads off the inning with a hit batter and then gets an unofficial three up, three down inning. Via the line out to JT Mix, he got hops on that one. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. The Sunfish still lead 2-0. Back on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. JT Mix showing he's got a little bit of hops. Doubles up the Sabre Dogs on the line out by Declan Buckle and the toss to Benito Garcia to get Reese Anderson. 
Andrew Garcia talked about on the Fish Tank podcast today how nice it is to pitch with the defense behind him and the defense that the Sunfish have been showing. Mitch Stroh checks his swing on a fastball that's called a strike on the outside corner. Stroh struck out looking back in the first inning. The Sunfish are up 2-0 over the Sabre Dogs here in the bottom of the third. The 0-1 is a curveball swung on and missed. Stroh's behind 0-2. Doing a little bit of digging before the game. I knew the Sabre Dogs led the Expedition League in runs scored, but I kind of wanted to just take a peek at their run differential compared to the Sunfish. Here's the 0-2. Fastball high is grounded into the glove of a diving Ethan Moore. Up and firing. The throw's a bit high, but Taylor Justice gets a glove on it. A nice show of the leather over there out at third by Moore. He's been diving all over the place today. And even had a hard hit ball to center field when he was at the plate. One out to Norris McClure, who singled back in the first inning. But so the Sabre Dogs and the Sunfish have the same second half record. Sabre Dogs 11 and 6 on top of the Lewis Division as McClure fouls one off into the parking lot here at Karis Park. That foul ball is presented by Karis, or excuse me, not Karis Park, Keg Chicken. It could be presented by Karis Park. Karis Park, uh, come watch Sunfish Baseball, enjoy it. Karis Park. The 0-1 is lined right past the glove of Sinclair, and Norris McClure's two for two on the day. And Norris McClure was the anti-beer batter. My knowledge serves me correct. It's the only team in the Expedition League to have an anti-beer batter, the Sunfish. So a dollar off of beer here at Karis Park for the rest of the inning. Of course, for those of you at home, get up, go to your fridges, and have one on me. It's free. It's better than a dollar off. Thanks to the anti-beer batter, Norris McClure. Zeff Hoffbauer struck out swinging his last time up. Takes a fastball high and away for ball one. But so they have the same records... In, their, in the second half of the season, the Sunfish two games behind the Fremont Moo in the Clark Division while the Sabre Dogs lead the Lewis. But overall, the Sabre Dogs are 33-15 and 15 with the Sunfish 25-23. and 23. McClure dives back and just evades the tag of Taylor Justice on the throw over. And sa the Sabre Dogs have scored 449 runs while the Sunfish have only scored 334 while the Sabre Dogs have allowed seven more runs, though, than the Sunfish. McClure takes off. Hoffpower swings and misses. Gets in the way a little bit of the throw of Hannigan. And actually, they are calling it batter interference. McClure swung on, and it was a normal swing. He just looked like he was kind of chasing one. And the home plate umpire is saying that he got in the way of the throw of Hannigan, which was is not false, but... Hoffpower didn't do anything out of the ordinary to interfere with Hannigan's throw. Walker Bullington, who's coaching third tonight, is having some words with the home plate umpire. Norris McClure is on his way back to first. That conversation was short-lived, and Hoffpower is still out on catcher's interference, well, not catcher's interference, hitter's interference on the throw down to second. The Sunfish have only seen this once this season. It was when they were in Wheat City or Grand Forks against the Whiskey Jacks just a few weeks ago. It was actually Houston Fogelstrom who got in the way of the throwdown to second for the Sunfish, helping the Sunfish get out of the inning. So now there's two runners or two out with a runner on. Declan Beers takes a fastball high for ball one. Sunfish still lead 2 0 here in the bottom of the third inning. So no stolen base for Norris McClure. Zeff Hoffpower is called out on an 0-2 count via hitter's interference. McClure off and running again. Pitch misses away as Hannigan's throw sails again into right center field. Got on the tip of the glove by Declan Buckle. But again goes into the outfield. So Norris McClure gets his second stolen base of the game. Technically his third because he was in time. <laughs> but he was sent back because of the interference. 
Two balls, no strikes to the lefty Beers. With now a runner on second and two outs. So the Suris Valley, 308 runs allowed. Those are all runs, including unearned runs. The Sunfish, 301. Time is called. Sunfish have a plus 33 run differential the entire season. This isn't just second half. So entire season. While the Sabredogs, plus 141. The 2-0 is a change up high and away. It's 3-0. 141. They've scored 141 more runs than the teams they have faced. And, well, that just shows how dominant hitting-wise the Sabredogs have been. They've had a lot of games scoring upwards of high teens or low 20s. Strike called right down the middle. It's 3-1 and one with two outs. Offensively, the Sabre Dogs have been on top of things. And it's when their bats can't go that, well, that calls for the 15 losses that they've had to deal with. Bit of inconsistencies in this second half of the season. They will foul one, or Beers, excuse me, will foul one off into the parking lot again. And the count is now full. Norris McClure at second, no one behind him, so he won't be off on the pitch. Beers having to be more defensive at the plate now. Sunfish lead by two in the bottom of the third inning. Two outs, runner on second. Shane Sinclair sets at the chest. Checks back at second, kicks and delivers. Beers drives this one into right field. Coming in and getting the ball is Alan Greer on the slide. Alan Greer was coming in, did a bit of a half slide, or at least went down to a knee. And he makes the catch. As, well, as talked about, you can't hold offers against this Sunfish team. They hit the ball hard, but unfortunately, they just hit it right at people as Beers rips that one straight into the glove of Alan Greer and right. No runs, one hit, no errors. One left on base for the Sunfish in the bottom of the third inning. And after three from Karis Park, it's the Sioux Falls Sunfish two, the Sioux Valley Sabre Dogs zero. Taylor Justice, Drew Miller, and Jordan Williams leading off the top of the fourth inning with the Sunfish leading 2-0. The Sabre Dogs have not gotten a hit yet through three. Fastball runs low and in. Taken for ball one by Justice. 89 on the radar. And Andrew Garcia doesn't take many pitches to get warm in between innings. And he's just always quick. I know I kind of sound like a broken record when I talk about it. Change up misses high. Gets past Declan Beers for ball two. I get I sound a bit like a broken record when I talk about it. But he's just quick with his work. Doesn't let the batter really get into their rhythm. Almost makes him uncomfortable at the plate. And he still has such command of the zone. A 91 mile an hour fastball is fouled off by Justice. And it's two balls and a strike. 
to the Sabredogs first baseman. He struck out looking back in the first inning. And here's something you don't see every day. This is not baseball related whatsoever, I apologize, but a Philadelphia Flyers hockey jersey in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's interesting. 2-1, slider misses high, it's 3-1. That's not something you see every day, but it works. Respect to them. Three balls and a strike to Justice. Fastball misses a bit high, and the leadoff man is aboard. For the third time this game, first time via walk, the other two guys who let off an inning to get on, they were both hit by a pitch in their first at-bat. Now it's the lefty Drew Miller who grounded out to Benito Garcia at short his last time up. Sunfish still lead 2-0 here in the top of the fourth inning with a run around with no outs. Fastball right on the outside corner is called a strike. So with just 15 games remaining in the inaugural season, it's a tough road ahead for the Sunfish. Garcia throws over to first, no tag by Hoffpower. There's this four-game series against the first half of the Lewis Division winners, Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs, who are currently on top of the Lewis Division as well. Four games against them. Two games against the Western Nebraska Pioneers, who are the first half of the Clark Division winners. Fastball is called a strike. Miller wanted to chase, as it thought it was a bit high. Instead, it's called... A strike at the upper part of the zone. He's behind 0-2. And, and then after that two-game series, it's a long road trip. Two games against the Spearfish Sasquatch. Change up just misses away. It's 1-2. and two. So two games in Spearfish. The Sasquatch currently in the Clark Division. 10-7. and seven. So just three games behind the Fremont Moo. A game behind the Sunfish. 92 mile an hour fastball. Chased and missed by Drew Miller. He goes down swinging. That's strikeout number three of the evening for Andrew Garcia. Out number one here in the top of the fourth. Jordan Williams grounded out to lead off the second inning. He's up with a runner on first. Williams didn't get to his stats as he takes a change up on the inside corner for strike one. So he grounded out on the first pitch he saw. Three, uh, 324 batting average, 20 RBIs, seven walks, three home runs, five doubles, and a triple. Throw over to first, a slow throw over, so no tag by Hoff Power. Went one for five on Saturday with a pair of strikeouts. So two games in Spearfish before a three-game series in Casper, Wyoming. That's right, three games in Casper. So that will be one of the easier series. Not that it's a walk in the park for the Sunfish as a curveball away is swung on and missed by Williams, who's down 0-2. A three-game series in Casper. A day off, which is just traveling to Minot to play the Sabredogs once again. Foul tip. Stays foul as Williams stays alive at 0-2. And after that three-game series against the Sabredogs, the Sunfish close out their inaugural season back home at Karis Park with, well, the same way they started it. Two games against the Fremont Moo who currently lead the Clark Division of the Expedition League. The 0-2 runs high. It's 1-2. 92-mile-an-hour fastball. Garcia almost seems like he gains velocity as the game goes on. It'll be the sixth inning, pitch number 94. He'll still be throwing 91-92. Here's the 1-2. 92, lower outside corner, gets Williams looking. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, and there's two away here in the fourth. 
Top of the fourth inning, runner on first, two outs. Sunfish lead 2-0 for Cullen Hannigan. The catcher had to take his shin guards off. He walked back in the second. Three innings of where one man has gotten on. This will, unless Justice takes off, swing and a miss on a curve ball, low. It's 0 and 1. Unless Justice somehow takes off or Hannigan singles, this may be the first inning that the Saber Dogs don't send a guy to second. Hannigan wearing his pants high, showing dark blue socks, three white stripes at the calf. Broken bat, slow grounder to Garcia at short. Charging, picks it up, double clutches. The throw pulls off power at the bag, but it was late anyway. Garcia had to double clutch on that one. I think he just didn't get a good grab on the ball, exchanging it from the glove to the hand. And that's the first hit of the game for the Sabre Dogs off a broken bat roller to short. Broadcaster Jinx in full effect. Sometimes I just need to think before I speak and remember all the previous times I said something like that and knowing it never goes well for the Sunfish. It'll be Ethan Moore who flew out to center his last time up. Takes a slider that rolls away from Declan Beers. He'll slide to grab it, but no throw as Justice will get third for free. The opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games tonight from Tokyo, a year after they were supposed to happen. Now with runners at the corners, Declan Beers will give a sign to the infield. Underway currently, or at least what we've had on the TV, there's been some soccer games going on, some prelims. Some softball games, softball making its return to the Olympics. We're currently single person rowing. Slider just misses inside, it's two and oh. Tonight I believe will be the opening ceremonies on NBC or at least a rebroadcast of it, I would guess. As the official games are all starting tomorrow. Throw over to first, no tag. It's an exciting time as the, well, the Tokyo Olympics were actually on the verge of getting canceled once again. There were those numerous cases of COVID sporadically showing up again. The 2-0 in the dirt again. It's 3-0 from Garcia to Moore. So that infield hit might play crucial as there's runners at the corners and potentially a full or bases loaded if Moore ends up walking here. He's the potential go-ahead run. He'll take a fastball at the knees for strike one. The tying runs on first in Colin Hannigan as the Sunfish lead 2-0. Thank goodness that the Tokyo Olympics were not canceled. And almost starts to make you think that things are all right in the world. Curveball misses low, and just like that, the bases are loaded. It'll roll away from Declan Beers into play. Hannigan is now on second. Ethan Moore is on first. And after a leadoff walk and back-to-back -back strikeouts, it was that broken bat slow roller to a charging Garcia. That would allow Cullen Hannigan to get the first hit of the game, and then that ball they got by Declan Beers to put Taylor Justice on third, but the walk would have advanced him anyway, and now there's two outs with the bases loaded for the lefty Gunnar McGran. Struck out looking to end the second inning. First pitch from Garcia runs low and in. A fastball, 1-0. and oh. This is not the Andrew Garcia that we're used to seeing. And while I'm fully confident that he can get out of this inning, usually he doesn't put himself in situations like this. The 1-0, slow roller to JT makes that second. Charging, gloves it, throws over to first, and just like I said, I'm confident that Garcia could get out of it, and he does. He gives up the no-hitter on a slow roller to short from Cullen Hannigan, 
But still, no run score for the Sabre Dogs. Three are left on base. It's 2 0 after the top of the fourth inning. Andrew Garcia gets out of a sticky situation, and the Sabre Dogs are still scoreless. The Sunfish, however, lead 2 0. Gannon Thompson kicking this bottom of the fourth inning off for Sioux Falls. He got on his last time, pops up the first one out of play for strike one. Walked and scored the first run on that double steal back in the second. Himself and Jesus Lecone were trying to take third and second. Lecone would get stranded in between first and second. Thompson would take advantage of it. He commits on a curveball low and away, 69 on the radar gun, and he's behind 0 and 2. Shane Sinclair through three innings now has 53 pitches. The 0 2. Brushes back Thompson a bit on the curve ball in. It's one and two. But back to what the Sunfish have on the back of their or the rest of their schedule. I mean, you look at it. It's just the Saber Dogs, the Sasquatch, the Horseheads, and the Moo. The one two, curve ball, rings him up on the inside corner. That one looked like it was just a bit below the knees, and in fact, the pitch that had been slightly before it. Thompson has his palms upward, hands outstretched, and I don't think he's saying, hey, my fish was this big. I think he's saying, where did that one even hit close to the zone? Strikeout number four for Seth St. Sinclair. It'll be Jesus Lecone who singled and had that stolen base that helped Gannon Thompson score in the last inning. Slider misses low and away. It's 1-0. But so out of the remaining schedule, the Sunfish have, well, two teams who currently lead their respective divisions. A third team who won last division and is also top three. Lee Cohn skyrockets this one down the right field line. Coming in is Greer. Going out is Justice. All of them will let it fall as Greer was the one who was closest but couldn't get over there. Foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. And then, of course, the Spearfish Sasquatch, while they're currently in fourth, just three games behind Fremont, they actually made a late first-half run trying to get the first-half division crown, but fell a bit short and ended up finishing second in the first-half Clark Division standings. So a tough schedule to boot for the Sunfish coming up. And I think it'll end up coming down to Fremont and Sioux Falls in that last series. Lee Cohn. 
Checks his swing, but Alex Shoemaker down at first said no, he didn't. Swings out a slider low and away. It's one ball and two strikes to Lee Cone. <laughs> Sinclair sets at the stomach, kicks and delivers. Lee Cone pushes this one into right field. Greer was coming in, but it goes over his head and bounces off the wall. Lee Cone's on his way to second. The throw in from Greer sails over the head of Declan Buckle, and it now rolls all the way into the Sabre Dogs dugout. Lee Cone gets a double that turns into a triple on the throw out of play. And just like that, the hard hit ball. It looked like Greer had a difficult read on it. Like I said, he took about two steps in before heading out, and the ball just kept sailing over his head. Bounced off the bottom of the wall out there in right field. 310 to the right field corner, 320 to the left, 395 out to dead center here at Karras Park. So with a runner on third and one out, Dane Frazier will step up. The official scoring on that is a double and advances on the throw out of play. Fastball will touch the outside corner for strike one. Frazier singled but was caught stealing on the beautiful throw down by Cullen Hannigan the last inning. Credit where credit is due. It's always fun watching a catcher just pop up and throw an absolute strike. Slider misses in the dirt. Good stop by Hannigan. One and one now to Frazier. The Sunfish still lead 2-0. With one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning and a runner 90 feet away from scoring and extending the lead. Even if it's against your team, though. Like, obviously, you don't want, as a Sunfish broadcaster, I'm hoping for good things and good things only for Sioux Falls. Slider misses low. It's 2-1. and one. But just as a baseball fan, it, it's always fun watching a catcher just throw an absolute strike. I don't know. That's the baseball fan in me. Two balls and one strike to Dane Frazier. That ball gets away from Hannigan, bounces off the top of the netting. Lee Cohn is slowly jogging in, and Sinclair was jogging in as well. And I think if Sinclair had come in, I think he thought that Lee Cohn was going to run a little bit faster than that. As Hannigan threw it to his pitcher, who was about just on the edge of where the dirt in front of home plate meets the grass. And if he had sprinted in, I think it would have been a lot closer of a play and potentially an out for Lee Cohn. Three balls and a strike to Frazier. The Sunfish are up 3-0 now. Pitch from Sinclair. Misses in on the fastball. And a one-out walk puts Frazier on for the second time today. JT Mix from the nine spot singled and drove in Lee Cohn his last time up. Was ahead 3-0. Swung at a 3-0 pitch, fouled off one, and on a full count, drove in Lee Cohn from third. So with one out, runner on first, Mix gets his second hacks today. Middle infield playing at double play depth. Mix takes a fastball outside for ball one. And with an early 3-0 lead over the Sabre Dogs, that doesn't mean anything for Sioux Falls. If you need evidence, you go back to Sunday where they were ahead 3-2, then scored two more right after the Moo would score their two and make it a 5-2 game heading into the top of the ninth inning. Mix rips one down the third base line, but it bounces just foul past the third base bag. Past third base, not the third base. So one out as Frazier heads back to first. But into the top of the ninth inning, it seemed like the Sunfish were all but on their way into the all-star break with a one-game winning streak and a tie on top of the Clark division. But the Moo would put up a miraculous top of the fourth. Mix swings through an off-speed way in front of that one. Nice change up high by Sinclair mixing things up a bit. It's one and two now. So three nothing means nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. 
It's not over till the fat lady sings, as some might say. Or in this case, out number three in the ninth. Curveball drops in on the outside corner, and Mix goes down looking. Two strikeouts for Sinclair here in the fourth, five on the day. And with two outs and a runner on first, it'll be the top of the order, Benito Garcia, who has become very familiar with Ethan Moore over at third. A ground out and a line out to the Sabredogs third baseman have made Garcia 0 for 2 on the day. Sun beginning to set to the right here at Karras Park. Lights are not on. There's still sun all the way in the outfield. Fastball misses outside. It's 1-0. and Bit low and away. Might have caught the knees a little bit of Garcia. This is one of the better times to be on defense as the sun, while it may be a bit in your eyes, it's not as bad as it is usually around 635 first pitch. Ball gets by Hannigan on a curveball in the dirt, and Dane Frazier takes second. So now the force out at second has been taken away, and it's just a play at first if Garcia hits it on the ground. Two balls, no strikes to the Sunfish shortstop. Three nothing Sioux Falls here in the bottom of the fourth inning from Karis Park. Seth Sin or Shane Sin Sinclair, excuse me, still on the mound for Sioux Fall or Sewers Valley. Easy for me to say, as Garcia will take a fastball at the knees for strike one. Seemed like the three-day break has done wonders for the Sunfish. They've been seeing the ball a bit better at the plate. While there have been a little bit more strikeouts looking, it's not necessarily on them. Some borderline pitches are just being called strikes. Here's the 2-1. Taken low and away. It's 3-1 now to Garcia. Number of things that I've heard around the dugout on what was done over the three-day break. A lot of guys went home, or a number of them did, even some that further away. Norris McClure flew all the way back to Louisiana, and he brought his parents back. Got to meet them today. Nice people. The 3-1 taken low, and Garcia draws the two-out walk. Fastball just below the knees was taken for ball four as Garcia is greeted by Tyler Olmstead at first. So Dane Frazier at second, Benito Garcia at first for Mitch Stroh, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Stroh was one of the many who stayed in Sioux Falls, but... Then again, he's got a house here. Calls Augustana home during the school year, and so during the summer he gets to call his, well, the house he lives with many of the baseball players home. I actually got to go over there, play some pool during the home run derby on Monday. A slow slider misses just a bit low to Stroh. It's 1-0. So Stroh was in town. Norris McClure flew all the way back to Louisiana. Benito Garcia told me he watched five movies over those three days. Worked out a little bit. Don't know what movies. He didn't tell me. The 1-0 is a fastball low and away. Backhand stopped by Hannigan. Preventing from Frazier and Garcia advancing. We're going to have time called here for a mound visit. Two balls, no strikes to Mitch Stroh. Two outs, runners on first and second. Sunfish leading 3-0. Number of the players, including Dane Frazier, Andalo Santangelo, Pete Weil, Austin Oblas. I think those were all of them. Might have been one more. Went capping in the Black Hills. Or at least from what Jacob Lassier told me, they were in the Black Hills. It's either that or the Badlands. That group of people did go to the Badlands earlier this season for a couple days off. So that was interesting. Kenneth Dutka left town. I'm not exactly sure where he went, but he actually did not make it back today. When I've been told he was actually supposed to be tonight's starter, but instead last night, Walker Bullington had to make the change to Andrew Garcia. Here's the 2-0. 
Stroll will take a fastball at the knees for strike one. Lane Hovde, another man missing from this game, usually coaching third base. Walker Bullington reprising his role from early in the season, coaching third tonight. In the absence of Hovde, Stroll lines one down the left field line. Foul. Presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, Keg Chicken. Hovde most likely making his return to third base tomorrow night. Walker was very excited. Heavy sarcasm on that to be back out at third. He prefers to be in the dugout. Not that he doesn't enjoy coaching third. Two balls, two strikes from Sinclair to Stroh. And it, a curveball will hit Stroh in the back. As now the bases are loaded on a pair of walks and a hit by pitch. That's one way to get on. And the Sunfish throughout this season have... Well, excelled, is that the right thing to say? Excelled at getting hit. Not sure if that's something to brag about. That's hit batter number 69 for the Sunfish this season. They only trail the Fremont Moo at 74. The Sabredogs with their pair being hit tonight are up to 65 on the season. It's the lefty Norris McClurk. Norris two for two, takes a curveball low and in, blocked by Hannigan. For ball one. Three nothing lead. McClure looking to extend that. He struggled a bit against the Moo. And that's really the only team all season he has struggled against. His first game in which he did not record a hit after becoming a Sunfish was against the Moo. Those Mondays ago. Down in Fremont. 19-7. Victory for the Sunfish in that game. As McClure takes a fastball just off the outside corner for ball two. That was all the way back on June 28th. This time takes a fastball on the opposite corner inside, and it's called a strike, 84 miles an hour from Sinclair. And it was Norris, who dating back to... Friday, July 9th, played seven out of the eight games against the Fremont Moo. Fouls one off of his foot, and the count's even at two and two. And in those seven games, McClure, again, he, he struggled just a little bit. Went, had five hits. Let's do some quick math. Seven, 11, 16, 19, 19, 23, 29. Five for 29 in seven games against the Fremont Moo, including three games where he went hitless. Just bouncing back nicely tonight. Has already gone two for two with a pair of stolen bases. He's got the count two and two right now with two outs bases loaded here in the bottom of the fourth. Three nothing Sunfish lead. Sinclair sets, kicks, delivers. McClure shoots this one into left field. That's going to fall for a base hit past Williams. Benito Garcia is running home from second and a two-out, two-RBI single for Norris McClure. It's one thing to go three for three in a game. It's one thing with a 2-2 two -two count and two outs to get a hit to extend the lead 5-0. Sinclair is going to have Colin Hannigan coming out for a mound visit and with him, is the Sabre Dogs head coach, and that might be it for Seth Sinclair. Do you think he was holding up the stop sign to his head coach, Alex Miklos, as to say, I can close out this inning, but his efforts were all for naught. The Sunfish now hold a 5 0 lead with two outs in the bottom of the fourth, with a runner on first and second. We'll return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube with the replacement after this.
Zeph Hoff Power will face up against Declan Harper. That's right. There are three Declans in this game now. Declan Beers, Declan Buckle, and now Declan Harper. Harper in his eighth appearance out of the bullpen for the Sabre Dogs. Has not faced the Sunfish yet. Throws a 91 mile an hour fastball that's foul tipped by Hoff Power into the glove of Cullen Hannigan. Two on, two out. Sunfish have scored three so far in the fourth and take a 5-0 lead over the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. 8.3 ERA for Harper. Eight and two-thirds innings pitched this season. Misses high with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Nine strikeouts, ten walks. Hasn't appeared since July 16th against the Western Nebraska Pioneers. One and a third innings of relief. Allowed two earned runs off two hits, three strikeouts. Mitch Stroh at second, Norris McClure at first. Fastball right on the outside corner, chest high. It's one and two. Zeff struck out in the first before being called out on hitter's interference on Norris McClure's stolen base in the third. And now is behind one and two here in the bottom of the fourth. Takes a 92 mile an hour fastball high. It's two and two. Every pitch that Harper has thrown this inning has been over 90 miles an hour. You can only imagine how throwing that hard for that long might not get you too far in a game. In fact, his longest outing has just been two innings, but he blows another one past a swinging Zaffoff power who goes down for the second time. First strikeout for Harper on the evening. That's strikeout number six for the Sabre Dogs. Two runs off two hits. Just making sure. Two hits. No errors. Two left on base for the Sunfish. They're up 5 nothing after four.
in what is one possibly might be the weirdest happy birthday rendition I've ever heard. We're wishing Zach Campbell, the assistant general manager of the Sioux Falls Sunfish, a very happy birthday today. And what a better way to have your birthday than seeing Andrew Garcia for his fifth inning of work, throw an 89 mile an hour fastball on the outside corner to Reese Anderson for strike one. That's how I would want to spend my birthday and well, it just happened. Now a 90 mile an hour fastball bounces in the dirt away from Declan Beers all the way up the netting for ball one. It's one and one to Reese Anderson who was hit by a pitch and doubled up at second. His last time up, but Zach Campbell, happy birthday. And another good reason to be celebrating it's five nothing sunfish a fastball runs high it's two and one now to anderson sunfish scored two in the second inning one off of a double steal and another off of a single by jt mix the two one is a fastball up and in anderson has to duck out of the way he was hit on the first pitch that he saw back in the third inning and then three score there in the fourth on a double by Jesus Licon, a walk by Dane Frazier, a walk by Benito Garcia, and a single by Norris McClure. Fastball right down the heart of the plate, makes it a full count. Norris McClure, three for three as the anti-beer batter today. I haven't really been bringing that up all too much, but keep going to your fridges, get some beers. Fastball runs in, and Anderson will reach via the walk here in the fifth. Shane Sinclair was done after three and two-thirds innings. He allowed seven hits, five runs, all of them earned. Three walks and five strikeouts through 21 batters faced. So it just wasn't Sinclair's night in his second start. Declan Harper came in and got the job done against Zeph Offpower, striking him out to end the inning. 88 mile an hour fastball misses high to the top of the order. Declan Buckle. You have Declan Buckle at the plate. Declan Beers behind the plate. Funny thing is, they're both number three. Then you have Declan Harper, who spells it different. It's D E K L A N, not D E C. Fastball gets away from Beers. On his way to second is Anderson. And we have a fairly similar situation as to what we had in the third. Anderson might. Stay a bit closer to second this time. It was a sharply hit liner to JT Mix the last time that Buckle was up. Mix jumped as high as he could, caught the ball, and tossed it to Benito Garcia for the double play. Buckle's ahead now 3-0 and as a fastball misses low and away. And I kind of mentioned it earlier. Andrew Garcia just isn't showing his command of the strike zone as he usually has. He's up to 66 pitches through just four innings. It's a bit high for him. The 3-0 is a 91 mile an hour fastball right at the knees. Garcia is usually a pitcher who thrives on the edges of the strike zone. And Bubbles behind the plate just really hasn't been calling many of the corners. A late time as Garcia threw what would have been a curveball that would have been right at the inside corner at the knees to buckle for strike two. It doesn't matter. And the reason I'm sorry I paused on that, her PA announcer, Ryan, just said the time is 8.12 p.m. as the umpire called time. Strike on the inside is called on the fastball. It's a full count. That's funny. Why don't more teams do something like that? Obviously, it would get annoying real quick, but just once every so often when the umpire calls a late time like that and yells time, it says the time is 8-12, something like that. It's, that's funny. I like that. Payoff pitch is chopped over to Garcia, plays it off the second hop, over to Hoff Power, bit low but caught for out number one. So not the double play like last time, but Buckle is now 0 for 2 on the day. Benito Garcia has been fairly busy, himself and fellow middle infielder JT Mix. 
four times the Sabre Dogs have grounded out to short. They've grounded out twice to second, lining out one time as well. Fastball up and away. Here's ball one to Alan Greer. Greer 0 for 2. He's responsible for two of those ground outs over to Garcia at short. Sun is now really starting to set. Little streaks of light on the right side of the outfield here at Karras Park, home of Ronkin Field. Lights still are not on yet. The Sunfish leave 5-0. Curveball drops in, but misses the zone. It's 2-0. Garcia looking a bit flustered out there on the mound. He just hasn't really looked like himself today, and I don't think it was had anything to do with his normal routine. He's just kind of a guy who he'll do some stuff in the outfield. Usually he will spend a lot of his time listening to some music in the dugout, which he was doing earlier. Here's the 2-0 from Garcia. Fastball that gets just by Declan Beers into the home plate umpire's foot. It looked like he was hopping off that one. No throw down from Beers. And now 90 feet away is Reese Anderson. Three balls, no strikes as the home plate umpire is going to walk off that one. 91 miles an hour, straight in the toe. And as helpful as tennis shoes are... Can't imagine they're that helpful on a 91 mile an hour fastball that just caught a piece of the dirt. So three balls, no strikes, but Garcia, I think the only change in his normal routine is he was on the fish tank today. Again, you can find the fish tank on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Myself and head coach Walker Bullington have a different guest every week including some bonus shows. We had our first one this last Saturday with the three Augustana players. There's now five on the Sunfish team. Fastball hits the outside corner for strike one to Alan Greer. JT Mix, Will Olson, and Mitch Stroh are the three that have remained constant. Caleb Krantz was here but has left. Tom Sun has recently joined the team. And Declan Beers is the newest Augustana Viking. Fly ball into center field, charging in is Mitch Stroh. He'll make the catch on the slide. He's just up and lobs it into JT Mix, now trying to test the arm to get Anderson, who tags. A nice catch by Mitch Stroh out in center. As the Sabre Dogs are on the board here in the fifth, it's 5-1 Sunfish with two outs in the top of the fifth inning. Taylor Justice. Walked his last time up, was left stranded on third when the bases were left loaded for Sewers Valley. While Garcia has been struggling a little bit, the Sabre Dogs really haven't gotten, well, a hold of any of his pitches as Justice swings and misses. It's really been the walk. And the hit by pitch that has been beneficial for Sewers Valley today. Garcia has only allowed one hit, and it was the broken bat slow roller off the bat of Cullen Hannigan. Curveball bounces away from Declan Beers, and the count's even at one. Two outs, top of the fifth inning. Sunfish lead now only by four as the Sabre Dogs score for the first time today. Sabre Dogs have a two-game winning streak on the line tonight after taking two out of three against the Western Nebraska Pioneers. Slider cuts into the zone a bit. It's one and two as Justice takes that one. Seven hits for the Sunfish, only one for the Sabre Dogs. Three of those hits via Norris McClure. The one-two. Fastball taken just below the knees, 92 miles an hour. And again, it's still amazing that it seems like the later in the game it is, the faster Garcia can throw. That was pitch number 78, and it was 91. 79 is just the same. 91 miles an hour on the outside corner. Garcia gets Taylor Justice looking for the second time today. The... 
Fifth strikeout for Garcia total as the Sabredogs put one on the board on a walk and some pass balls and a sack fly by Alan Greer. One run, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. The Sunfish now only lead by four. Speaking of Augustana Vikings, the newest one, Declan Beers, leads off the bottom of the fifth inning. Gannon Thompson, Jesus Lee Cohn to follow. Beers was the only Sunfish to not have a plate appearance the last inning where they scored three. He fouls off the first pitch he sees. That foul ball, just like every other, is presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. And I'm not lying to you. Keg chicken is, it's good. It's really good. We have it after post game. If you're ever in the Sioux Falls area, I highly recommend it. Declan Harper back on the mound, throws his first off speed. And it's to Declan Beers, who's now behind 0 and 2. The, the Saber Dogs scored their first run of the game in the top of the fifth inning. 91 mile an hour fastball misses away. It's Five to one Sunfish and the count to Declan Beers is one and two. Two up the rest of the weekend, three games against the Sabre Dogs, followed by two games at home against the Western Nebraska Pioneers on Monday and Tuesday. Beers fouls off another fastball just to the left of the Sabre Dogs dugout and up the line. It's still one and two. All First pitches for those games, 635 on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. Again, props again to our producer, Sean Henley. As the one-two is held off by Beers. Instead, Alex Shoemaker over at first says he went. Didn't look like Beers really took the bat off his shoulder as Beers is staring down at Shoemaker down the first baseline. Tyler Olmstead having some words with the field umpire as well. And there's some around the horn gone awry as the ball went into the right field foul territory on the throw around by the Sabre Dogs infield. Beers is down on strikes. The second strikeout of the day for Declan Harper. Strikeout number seven for the Sunfish. Gannon Thompson is up. He walked and struck out his two times up. Takes a curveball low and away for strike one, though, on the outside corner. A light crowd for the Sunfish tonight. I think just a random Thursday afternoon after three days off. People started to forget, oh, yeah, we got the Sunfish. They're back in action. Thompson takes one even lower and away, this time a ball. 
44 in attendance tonight. Fastball hits the outside corner, one and two. Light crowd upwards of close to 200 on both Saturday and Sunday against the Fremont Moo, a big series. Can only imagine what Karis Park is going to be like this weekend. Fastball called strike three at the knees. Thompson stares down Harper before walking back. There's some people who are talking, sitting on some blankets over in the first base area. They get a, hoping it's family members of Gannon Thompson. He just kind of did a hand gesture saying that they needed to be quiet. That was weird. I'm hoping there are a few wearing some sunfish jerseys. Lee Cohn takes a breaking ball low. It's 1-0. Otherwise, that'd be, I think he might have been getting some chirping if those were not family members of his. The 1-0 curveball taken at the belt for strike one. This is around the time of the game where all well, the sunfish start to struggle a little bit. They can hit early, they can hit late. It's the middle innings where they take a few more pitches and Get less base runners. A 92 mile an hour fastball from Declan Harper catches the outside corner. It's one and two. Two outs, bottom of the fifth inning. Sunfish lead five to one. Here's the one two from Harper's. 93 mile an hour fastball. Low and away. That was in the left handed batter's box at the ankles of Lee Cone. 93 miles an hour. Two and two. Here's the pitch from Harper. 92 mo or 92 fouled off into the Sunfish dugout. Will Olson comes out and flips it back to someone in the dugout. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the fifth inning. Harper sets at the chest, kicks, delivers. 92 just below the knees. It's a full count. Sun has officially gone down behind the trees. The lights are on at Karis Park, and Ronkin Field is covered in few shadows. The payoff pitch misses high, and Lee Cohn battles back and draws the two-out walk. He is yet to be put down today. A single and a double for the big man. He's also scored twice. Dane Frazier also has yet to be Retired. He has a single and a walk and one run scored. He was one of the three to score in the fourth. One of the two to score off of that single by Norris McClure. So two out, one on. Frazier coming off of his three hit game is already one for one. He'll take a fastball in for ball one. And it was the beginning of the season where the Sunfish weren't seeing pitches all too well. In fact, they had one of the lowest on base percentages in the Expedition League. Lee Cohn dancing around at first is almost caught off. Frazier on the half swing fouls a fastball off, and it's one and one. So one ball, one strike, two outs. Lee Cohn likes to dance around on the base pass, and on that one. He just caught Harper not looking and was almost taking off for second. The Sunfish with a 421 on base percentage are number three in the Expedition League. Fastball runs high, it's two and one. They've just been seeing the ball well. They've struck out a little more as of recent, more than they would probably like. Still not as much as other teams. 404 strikeouts coming into today's game. They've already struck out seven times as Frazier flies one high, but out of play over the Sunfish bullpen. It looks like it almost went into Bowden Field, the softball field that's just to the right of us here at Karis Park. A hard hit ball, and when you have 92 coming in and you have a quick swing, that'll be leaving a, well, a very fast rate. That's all I can say. That's the way I'll describe it. Two out, one on, 2-2 two -two count to Dane Frazier. Sunfish lead by four. Declan Harper sets, 
and delivers. Swing and a miss. Curveball in the dirt. Got him. And a runner is left stranded. Still 5-1 to one Sunfish after 5 from Karis Park. When we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube, it'll be Drew Miller, Jordan Williams, and Colin Handigan do up. Leading off the sixth, it's number seven, Drew Miller, the lefty. Will take a fastball that just hits the inside part of the zone for strike one. I think there was some confusion by something. Declan Beers was hesitant to throw the ball back, and Drew Miller was also looking back at the home plate umpire, but all is well now. It's the 0-1 is fouled into Declan Beers. And it's 0-2 now. For all you listening at home on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube, let me know where you're listening from. Put it in the chat or tweet at me at David Coyer, D-A-V-I-D-K-O-I-E-R on Twitter. DM us on Instagram at SF Sunfish. Let us know. The 0-2 misses away it's one ball and two strikes but let us know where you're listening from in the chat on mixler or on youtube maybe you'll get a shout out on the air one ball two strikes to drew miller garcia kicks and delivers this one's lined sharply down the right field line it'll just be foul 81 mile an hour curve ball Pulled down the right field line by the lefty Miller, and that's really one of the best hit balls today. The sack fly by Alan Greer to center was pretty nice. As well, back in the second inning, Ethan Moore had a nice hit ball in to left center field. The one-two. It's a changeup that just runs high and away. It's two and two. Walker Bullington's wife, Sam, is checking in from the Charlotte Airport. Watching on YouTube. Thanks, Sam, for tuning in while you're in your layover. Change up low is popped up out of play. It's still two and two. Those of you who watched the pregame interview or will eventually go and listen to the Sunfish podcast, Walker and his wife explored Sioux Falls and all it had to offer in North Dakota, two and two, runs low and in, it's three and two. The Badlands, Custer. Now let's see, where else did they go? They saw Mount Rushmore. We have Seth Miller from Sioux Falls tuning in. Hey Seth, how's it going? Payoff pitch is driven into right center field, coming over is Stroh, that's gonna fall and bounce to the wall. On his way to second is Miller. Stroh is up and firing as Miller will stop at second. With a leadoff double. Second hit of the ball game for the Saber Dogs, and it's the first extra base hit of the game. Again, he crushed one down the right field line, and this time he just straightens it out and takes it into right center. A double, and just the second hit of the ball game allowed by Andrew Garcia brings up Jordan Williams. 
Williams was the Sabre Dogs representative in the home run derby on Monday. Sunfish sent Will Olson. Fastball misses low. It's 1 0. It was the. I'm not mistaken, it was the man from Western Nebraska who won it. His name escapes me right now. E.J. Taylor from the Fremont Moo had four in the first round. That's what I remember seeing. Slider cuts across for strike one. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Seth, for letting us know where you're listening from. Come on, fans. Sewers Valley Saber Dogs fans, Sunfish fans alike, let me know where you're listening from. Put it in the YouTube chat. One ball, one strike. Swung on and missed on the changeup, low and away in the dirt, stopped by Declan Beers. It's one ball and two strikes now to Jordan Williams, who grounded out to second in the second, struck out looking in the fourth. Garcia with the long look in, finally sets out the belt. And he's ready to deliver the one two. Checks at second, kicks, delivers. Swing and a miss. Got him with the pitch outside. Williams was on his way to first, thinking that it might have been dropped, but Beers held on tightly. Out number one comes off strikeout number six for Andrew Garcia. His highest of the season is nine. That came all the way back against. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks at the beginning of June. June 2nd, in fact, when he went seven innings. And that was when he had the streak of 16 up, 16 down against the Whiskey Jacks in the first ever Sunfish win. The win beginning to pick up a little bit here at Karras Park. Slider misses low and away. Backhanded stop by Beers. It's 1-0. and Garrett Garcia from Lancaster, California. Thanks for listening. Stacy Stroh from Elk River, Minnesota. Braden Byers from Linton, North Dakota. Appreciate you all listening. Cami Bowling from Fremont, California. Go dog, she says. Declan Beers lets one get by. It's two balls and no strikes. And Drew Miller is now at third on the 2-0 count. So we got some Sabre Dogs fans. We got some Sunfish fans. All of them enjoying a nice game of baseball this Thursday evening. Tallahassee, Alabama, former coach of the newest Sunfish member, Logan Hunt, Trey Chambers. Well, thank you for listening. Fastball low and away. Again, a nice stop there by Beers. It's 3-0. So we got people from all over the place on this beautiful night here at Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Never read the temperature at the beginning of the game. Currently, it's 83 degrees. It got hot today, and tomorrow it says it's supposed to get up to 93 degrees in Sioux Falls. The corners are playing in. It's a fastball. We called a strike on the inside corner to Cullen Hannigan, who has a walk and a single today. 3-1 count with one out, one on. Here in the top of the sixth inning where the Sunfish lead five to one. The three one pitch is swung on and missed. 92 from Garcia. And to just prove my point, that was pitch number 96 for Garcia this evening and it was 92 miles an hour. His kid is incredible when it comes to the constant velocity. So 3-2 count, time is called. Gail from Sioux Falls. Thank you for listening. Debbie Breedwell and all the Breedwells from California. Hashtag go dogs here on the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. The 3-2 is a fastball swung on and missed. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Andrew Garcia. He's up to seven on the evening. Charlie Cuppins from Canada. Oh boy, we got someone north of the border listening to the Sunfish broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. As well as the Minot Sports Podcast watching. 
Wonder who they're rooting for. Two outs. Curveball just misses in. It's 1-0 and oh to Ethan Moore, who flew out in the second and walked back in the fourth, but was left at first. Now, Minot Sports Podcast from Corbett Field in Minot, North Dakota. The 1-0 sharply grounded over to Norris McClure. He's up with it, firing over to Zeph Hoffpower. And the throw just beats Ethan Moore. So after a leadoff double, Drew Miller is left stranded at third. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. After the top of the sixth inning from Karis Park, the Sunfish still lead by four. JT Mix in the ninth spot leading off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Sunfish lead 5-1 to one over the Sewers Valley Sabredogs. The Sabredogs looking to continue their winning streak and stay comfortably on top of the Lewis division while the Sunfish look to close in on the Fremont Moo for the lead in the Clark. A fastball fouled off from Declan Harper. And JT Mix is behind 0 and 1. And foul ball, like many others tonight, are presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, Keg Chicken. Mix holds off on the curveball at the knees, but it's called a strike anyway. It's 0 and 2. So thank you for all of you listening tonight. Being active in the chat, we have the Lassier family from Atlanta listening. Or at least Mama Lassier, as she says. Thanks for listening. And the Dutka family from Richmond, Texas. Tuning in. Kenneth not playing tonight, but Mr. Dutka still tuning in. An, an avid listener. Been here since day one. Thanks for listening. No balls, two strikes to mix as he follows another one off. Swings on a curveball in and misses for strikeout number five for Declan Harper already. That's the 10th strikeout of the evening for Saberdog pitching. Benito Garcia now up with one out. It'll be Garcia and Stroh, the one two, due up in this inning. Five strikeouts for Shane Sinclair, five now for Declan Harper. It is officially dark here in Sioux Falls. It was kind of a cloudy day, but now the sun has gone down. It's even darker. Garcia swings through a breaking ball, and it's 0-1. And, 
Harper has been dominant since coming in, but Garcia jammed on one, lines one into left field. Jordan Williams is there to make the catch. 91 hour, mile an hour fastball on the handle. Garcia turned on it quickly, but couldn't get enough barrel on it. Lines out to Williams for out number two. Sense coming in. Harper's been, well, pretty dominant. He struck out Zeph Hoffpower in the only at bat he had in the fourth. Stroh takes a curveball up and in. It's 1 0. Oh. Then two strikeouts to kick off the fifth. One walk and then another strikeout. So aside from that walk, Harper has put down everybody that he's faced. Curveball in the dirt. Alex Shoemaker says, yes, Smith Stroh went for strike one. Stroh on the night. 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth, grounded out to third, and struck out looking. Fastball is blooped slowly to Gunnar Margren at second. And the Sunfish go three up, three down for the first time in the game. No runs, no hits, no one, no errors, no one left on base after six full from Karis Park. It's the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs 1, the Sioux Falls Sunfish 5. Andrew Garcia's night is done. And it's a new face for the Sunfish, Logan Hunt out of Central Arkansas, making his Sunfish debut. Got some gray sleeves poking out of the orange and teal of the Sunfish jersey sleeves. And Logan Hunt. The righty will make his Sunfish debut against Gunnar McGran, Reese Anderson, and Declan Buckle. Andrew Garcia's night is over. One of the shorter outings for Garcia. His pitch count was getting up there after six, so Walker Bullington couldn't put him in there. A changeup is fouled off, and it's 0-1. First pitch he throws is a strike. That's always a good sign, right? Nothing wrong with that. A good start against McGran, who's 0 for 2. Garcia went six innings, allowed one earned run off six hits, 
Four walks, seven strikeouts. Curveball misses in the dirt. It's one and one. Don't know much about Hunt. Was kind of just told today that he was joining the team. I'm not going to lie. And when you quick Google him, can't find much on him. I even asked GM Nick Moen when he first told me he was on the team that it's like, well, you might not find much about him. Fastball runs up and away. It's two and one to the lefty McGran. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but from my, what, what, I'm be, what I was told, is the two and one, another fastball swung on and missed this time by McGrath. It's now two balls, two strikes. But what I've been told is that, well, he's on a high school. So just finished up in high school, and he's actually coming out here pitching for the summer before heading out. The 2-2 two -two is a curveball taken low. It's a full count. If my in information is incorrect, I apologize, but that's just what I was told by my superiors coming on the air. Thank you to Brooke Elena from Vancouver, British Columbia. Listening in on YouTube. Here's the payoff pitch from Hunt. And he gets a strikeout. His first batter faced as a Sioux Falls Sunfish puts him down swinging. That's a way to get yourself started. Logan Hunt. He's got a pair of sports goggles on looking in. I'm bad at judging heights, so I'm not even going to take a guess. I'd say somewhere around six foot, six one. He's a righty. On his windup, he holds the glove up by the ear. Does a change up high and away? It's one and zero oh to Reese Anderson, who was hit by a pitch and walked. He is the only run of the game for the Saber Dogs. The one zero. -oh. Fouled off on the fastball. It's one and one with one out. Sunfish still lead by four. And here in the top of the seventh inning, it's a good time to take a trip around the Expedition League. The Badlands Big Sticks and Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Played game one of their double header earlier. Curveball misses away. It's two and one. Big Sticks took that one 11 to four. Improving to nine and eight, while the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks fell to six and eleven. That's two straight losses for the Whiskey Jacks, while the Big Sticks have won two in a row. The two-one is lined down the first base line and right field line, but foul as it reached the outfield. It's two and two. In the bottom of the third, from Moeller Field, the Fremont Moo and Western Nebraska Pioneers are scoreless. Both teams, well, if they could lose, that would be beneficial to the Sunfish. Sioux Falls would prefer Fremont to get the loss as a win tonight would still keep them ahead of the Pioneers. The 2-2, two -two, curveball drops up and in. It's 3-2. The Hastings Sodbusters and Spearfish Sasquatch from Black Hills Energy Stadium. It was scheduled to start at 635 but their game live is not going. There might be a rain out or something there. We'll try and figure out more on that as the night goes on. Here's the payoff pitch from Hunt, fouled off again. Reese Anderson battling away with a fastball high. From Wolf Field in Idaho, it's the Canyon County Spuds and the Casper Horseheads. The Spuds lead 1-0 from Three Legends Field. The Mining City Tommyknockers and the Pier Trappers are scoreless in the top of the third inning. Here's the payoff once more. A fastball gets away from Declan Beers in the left-handed batter's box. And after kicking off his first inning with a strikeout, Logan Hunt has now walked Reese Anderson in his second batter faced. Now all he needs is a ground out and a fly out, and he's gotten through everything. Back to the top of the order we go. Declan Buckle, who is hit by a pitch. Lined out and grounded out. So he's 0 for 2. Buckle out of Cornerbrook, Newfoundland. Righty faces the righty and takes a curve ball just above the plate for ball one. When I say just above the plate, of course, meaning the height. It was straight and true. It was just a bit higher. 
In the bottom of the first from Kraft Field in game two of the doubleheader, they're scoreless between the Big Sticks and the Whiskey Jacks. Fastballs fouled off, and it's one and one. So the only two games that the Sunfish are really concerned with as we hit the final stretch will be that of which has the Moo and the Western Nebraska Pioneers as Western Nebraska sits comfortably at third in the Clark Division standings. Fastball up and in, gets a swing out of Declan Buckle. Not a good one at that as he was chasing it high, tried checking, but went anyway. It's one and two. Declan Beers, on the other hand, will come out and try and calm down the newest Sunfish pitcher, Logan Hunt. Hunt's fastball got up to as fast as 85. Usually it's roughly around the 82, 83 mark. He's got a curveball. Might have a changeup in there for you Sunfish listeners who know I somewhat struggle with the pitch identification. Know that sometimes it's the changeup that throws me for a loop. I've been getting better, though. I promise. One ball, two strikes with a runner at first. Curveball taken in the dirt. It's an even 2-2 two -two count. The Moo currently are on their two-game winning streak. After dropping the first two against the Sunfish in last weekend's weekend series, or two weekends ago, rather, throw over to first not in time to get Reese Anderson. The, Sun, or the Moo would then go on to win game two of Sunday's doubleheader, Monday and Tuesday's games, making the series... 3-2 to two in favor of the Moo. Fastball misses low and away. It's a full count. Sunfish would even up the series on Friday at 3-3 three and three before the Moo would go on and take the next two and take the eight games 5-3. to three. Runner goes. The 3 twos foul tipped into the glove of Declan Beers. The throw is just a bit high. JT Mix, his tag was on the ankle as he was almost scrambling to get back and tag the ankle of Anderson. Anderson slid pretty hard, and his toe kept on the base. No strike him out, throw him out. Just the strikeout to Declan Buckle on the foul tip. Strikeout number two of the inning, and with a runner on second, two outs, it's Alan Greer, number two. Grounded out to short twice and had a sack fly in the fifth, the only RBI of the game. Seven hits to two in favor of the Sunfish as they lead five to one. First pitch is a change up. That was it. Pretty sure. Change up fouled off. It's 0 and 1. Western Nebraska Pioneers who. Finished the first half on top of the Clark Division 23 and 8. Have since started out this second half 9 and 6. Fastball's called a strike on the outside corner. And Alan Greer's behind 0 and 2. So just 15 games for them. Two less than really everyone else at the top four. In fact, Hastings has played 18. The 0-2 is a curveball, chopped down the third base line, foul into the glove of Norris McClure. So unless the Pioneers make those up, they'll somewhat stay behind. They're 9-6, and six, so the same amount of losses as the Sunfish, just two less wins. So they're at a 600 winning percentage, while the Sunfish are at a 647. Saber Dogs, however, lead the Lewis division with the same w amount of wins. A strikeout looking on a curveball at the upper part of the zone to Alan Greer. And what a way to kick off your first inning as a Sunfish. Logan Hunt strikes out the side with a walk to Reese Anderson there in the middle. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. It's stretching time from Karis Park.
Norris McClure, who is three for three so far tonight. Looking to go four for four, especially for the Sunfish faithful here at Karis Park. A fastball from Declan Harper sails high. It's 1-0. Oh. Usually as the anti-beer batter, if you get a hit, it's a dollar off for the rest of the inning. McClure went three for three, so it's three separate innings where it's a dollar off. The 1-0 oh, hits McClure, and he won't be able to go four for four at this plate appearance. If it had been, it would have been buy one, get one free here at Karis Park. Again, if you want tickets to a Sunfish home game here at Karis Park, it's a fun time. You won't get to listen to me on the air, obviously, which is a big bummer, but hey, you'll get to enjoy the Sunfish in person at Karis Park. There's beer, there's good food, there's a good time. It's a beautiful field, wood, fencing all along everything, all the way on the perimeter out in the outfield. Beautiful, off power, lays off of a fastball, but it's called a strike at the chest. No outs, runner on first, Sunfish lead 5-1 to one here at the bottom of the seventh. If you're interested, DM the Sunfish. Excuse me. Throw over to first, late tag. McClure is safe at first. And DM the Sunfish at SF Sunfish on Twitter, Instagram, or go on Facebook, Sioux Falls Sunfish, or reach out on to the general manager, assistant general manager, Nick Moen, Zach Campbell. Get your tickets today. Now the throw over, not in time. You too can experience the anti beer batter and the beer batter. Get a dollar off beer and just have a good time watching some baseball. It's been a beautiful summer here in Sioux Falls. The 0-1 is a ground ball over to third. Moore's up with it, throws it over to second. McGran's relay over to first is not in time. So just the 5-4 fielder's choice. Gunnar Margran got it and threw it over as fast as he could, but Zeph off power ran it out and got on on the 5-4. So with one away, there's still a runner on first for Declan Beers, who's 0 for 3. Declan's been the victim of a couple strikeouts tonight. Sunfish in total have struck out 10 times. Not something you want to happen in your first game back from the All-Star break. A sharply hit ground ball into the glove of Moore. They'll try this again. The throw over to first this time is in time. The first, If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Moore to Margren over to Justice at first, the 5-4-3 gets Hoff, Power, and Beers. An unofficial three up, three down. That'll make back-to-back -back three batters faced in an inning. And Declan Harper is dealing late in this one after seven full from Sioux Falls. It's the Saber Dogs one, the Sunfish five.
top of the eighth inning on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. David Coyer bringing you all the action tonight and every night for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Taylor Justice, Drew Miller, Jordan Williams due up against Logan Hunt, who in his first inning as a Sunfish struck out the side, didn't go three up, three down. He did allow a walk to Reese Anderson, but the first pitch to Taylor Justice will be called a strike on the inside. The Sunfish lead 5-1. to one. They're giving an error somewhere. I think it might have been on that first double play that was potentially turned. Breaking ball bounces in the dirt. It's 1-1. One and one. I will have to quick go take a look at that as I just marked it a fielder's choice. They are, in fact, marking it an error. I'm going to go talk to them because I think Zaf Hoffpower might have beaten out the throw no matter what. A foul tip on a fastball sends it to the back netting. And it's one and two now to Taylor Justice. Justice 0 for 2 with two strikeouts looking and a walk. In the top of the fourth inning, he let off with a walk before being stranded all the way over at third base. Curve ball will miss just inside. Two and two. The wind picking up. We still don't have the American flag out in left field. Not sure what happened to it. I don't think anyone really understands what happened to the mysterious disappearing flag. Foul, or fastball is chopped over to JT Mix, who will flip it to Hoffpower for out number one. First ground ball out for Logan Hunt. He's now just a fly out and a line out away, really, from having everything happen to him in his first outing. It'll be Drew Miller, who doubled, struck out, and grounded out. So one for three on the day. It was when he doubled in the sixth that Andrew Garcia would recover, strike out two, forcing Ethan Moore to ground out to end the inning. Fastball low and away is taken for ball one. So the Sunfish have quite a few games at home before a long road stand. A fastball low and in, or I meant low and away on the first one, as it is the lefty Drew Miller, my mistake. This one's low and in, and it's swung on and missed, 85 on the radar gun. I believe that's the fastest that Hunt has thrown tonight. Here's the one and one. Curve ball swung just in front of into the bare hand, or the attempted bare hand of someone in the Sunfish dugout. That foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, Keg Chicken. One ball, two strikes, one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Sunfish lead by four. The one and two is lined straight at Garcia. He'll make the catch and almost throw it by JT Mix. The relay was thrown really fast over to Mix, who had to come across his body to catch that one. So there's the line out. Can he get the fly out? Logan Hunt. Again, guys, it's the little things that entertain me. When you're talking for three straight hours, you have to find the little things to make it entertaining for yourself as well as the fans. So I hope you guys are just as entertained as I am. Foul ball to the back. Netting from Jordan Williams makes it 0-1. Pair of strikeouts for Williams in the sixth and fourth. And then a ground out in his first plate appearance all the way back in the second. No balls, one strike, here's the pitch. Curve ball, misses just a bit high, didn't break enough. Hunt taps his chest quickly saying, that one's on me, it's one and one. And yeah, the wind, I love the flag out in the outfield because then you get to know where the wind's blowing and it looks like it's blowing in from left based on how the right side netting is going in. The one one, fastball gets over the glove of Declan Beers. He got a piece of it, but it still went to the netting. It's two and one. I can feel it also blowing on me, so I'm hoping that my microphone is not picking up that breeze as well. Two balls, one strike from Hunt. Here's the pitch. Fastball rolled over to short. Garcia plays it off the short hop, fires it over to Hoffpower, and a three up, three down inning. So two ground outs and a line out. Give Logan Hunt his first 
three up, three down inning as a Sunfish. And after two, he is not allowed a hit and has only allowed one base runner off the walk. After the top of the eighth inning, the Sunfish are still up by four. Declan Harper still on the mound for the Sabre Dogs. After coming in relief, he has gone three and a third. Has not allowed a hit, a run, and very few base runners. He'll drop in a curveball to Gannon Thompson for a strike. Thompson is 0 for 2 since walking and scoring back in the second. In fact, the only two base runners allowed as another breaking ball drops in for a strike to Thompson. Has not swung the bat yet. But the only base runners allowed were, well, a hit by pitch and a walk. Zeph Hoffpower also got on because he grounded out for Norris McClure. Fastball this time is blown by Thompson as Harper went with the curveball for the first two pitches and then blows a fastball right by Thompson for his third strikeout of the game. Strikeout number six for Harper. And you know, I was questioning, and it was silly of me to question this when he first got in. Here's Jesus Lecone, curveball. This is just a bit high, 1-0. When I said the longest outing for Harper till this point was two innings. The 1 0 is fastball high. Lee Cohn's ahead 2 0. Two innings on two occasions. Once in a loss to the Moo on the 4th of July, and once in a win against the Big Sticks on the 14th. Otherwise, just one inning, one and a third twice as well. 89 mile an hour fastball up and into Lee Cohn. He's got a hitter's count at 3-0. and But tonight, he's gone now three and two-thirds. And only hasn't allowed a hit. He only had allowed 10 coming into today's game as a fastball will be called a strike at the knees. It's 3-1. and one. In fact, there were three of his seven outings in which he didn't allow a hit. And of the others... He allowed three, two, three, and two hits. A fastball called a strike on the lower outside corner. Lee Cohn, who had been up 3-0, is now at a full count after two straight strikes. The 3-2 comes up and in, and I think nicks a piece of Lee Cohn's helmet or shoulder or something. It's a hit by pitch, not a walk. Lee Cohn is the first base runner of the eighth. And in every inning, besides that one out he got back in the fourth inning when he relieved, 
actually, excuse me, the sixth, he went three up, three down. So all but one inning, he is allowed a base runner as Declan Harper. The last time on the hit by pitch, forced a fielder's choice and then a double play. Dane Frazier now up. One for two with a single strikeout and a walk. Takes a fastball inside for a strike. Five to one Sunfish over the Saber Dogs late in this game. The 0-1. Slider low and away. It's one and one. And the Sunfish aren't able to score in this inning. They will take that four-run lead into the ninth inning. And it was the top of the ninth on Sunday in which the Sunfish would allow the Moo to score four unanswered. 88-mile-an-hour fastball called a strike on the lower outside corner. Frazier's behind one and two. With the Olympics right around the corner, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't ask everybody in the chat, what's your favorite event to watch in the Olympics, the Summer Olympic Games? Let's stick with summer. Obviously, there are the Winter Olympics. Fastball runs high. It's an even 2-2 count. I, for one, enjoy watching shot put and discus. I, myself, was a thrower in high school. Loved throwing discus. Loved watching those videos on YouTube. Of course, the reigning Olympic champion and world champion in shot put, both from the U.S. Here's the 2-2. Frazier takes a breaking ball low. It's a full count. Let me know in the chat on YouTube or Mixler. What's your favorite summer Olympic sport to watch with the... 2020 Olympics coming up or are they calling them the 2020 Olympics or are they calling it 2021? I'm getting a nod from our producer Shane saying it is the 2020. Payoff pitch. There goes Lee Cohn. Ball misses low and Frazier will have himself a walk. First time since Declan Harper has been on the bump that two have been on at the same time. And it's one away here in the bottom of the eighth inning for JT Mix. Time will be called as we'll have a mound visit. I don't think that'll be it for Harper. He's been very solid, and this might be his last inning, depending on if the Sabre Dogs can come back in the ninth or not. Trying to find where I have the pitch count. Harper, through three and two thirds innings, is only up to 55 pitches. That's not terrible at all. Home plate umpire Bubbles is on his way out, and we'll break up this powwow on the mound. I can't tell from here if there's someone warming up in the Saber Dogs bullpen. I just saw a ball thrown back, so it's safe to assume that there is. So it might just be one just to get a bit more time for whoever's in the bullpen to warm up. Sunfish still lead by four here in the bottom of the eighth. They have not scored since the fourth inning. Two runs in the second, three in the fourth to take a 5-0 lead. The Sabre Dogs would score their only run in the top of the fifth inning. The Sunfish have held on to this 5-1 lead now for two in a third innings. Fastball runs up and into JT Mix for the first pitch. It's 1-0. Again, fans, you feel free in the Sioux Falls Sunfish live stream. Tell me what your favorite Olympic sport is. Fastball brushes back. Be uh, mix, excuse me, not Declan Beers. JT Mix, it's 2-0. and oh. Debbie Breedwell likes diving and swimming. And then softball. Of course, softball and baseball back in the Olympics this year. And diving and swimming are always fun. Diving always just makes me nervous that they're going to hit their uh, cement platform. 88 mile an hour fastball runs high. It's 3 0 to mix. This is the first inning that we've really seen Harper struggle a bit. He'll get behind in counts, but he'll force a swing or a ground out or something. Right now he's just been struggling to find the zone. Here's the 3 0. Fastball misses high. It's another walk. As a hit by pitch, 
A walk, and now another walk, make the bases loaded with just one out. Hayes Lucy Cohn is at third. Dane Frazier is at second. JT Mix is at first for Benito Garcia. Andy in the chat likes gymnastics. Can't agree. I mean, there's not there's not a bad event in the Olympics. At least in my opinion. There's not a bad event in the Olympics. Gymnastics is always fun to watch because it's just like, yeah, there's no way I could do that. Garcia shows bunt, pulls back, fastballs down the middle anyway for strike one. Taylor Justice playing in his normal spot, as is Ethan Moore at the corners. Margren and Buckle up the middle and playing a double play depth. Here's the 0-1 to Garcia. Pops this one up right side, but that's going to go out of play. That foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, Keg Chicken. So we got diving and swimming, softball, gymnastics. I like throwing. Beach volleyball, the sand volleyball. That's always it's so fun to watch. I just love volleyball in general. The 0-2, fastball just misses the lower outside corner. It's 1-2. and two. Well, regular volleyball is fun. Sand volleyball, I think that's just a little bit more exciting. Just two people. And it's just more intense. One ball, two strikes, bases loaded, one out, bottom of the eighth. Curveball runs high, it's two and two. Out in center, Reese Anderson shading to the right of second base. Benito Garcia likes to hit it up the middle a lot. Just ask the Pier Trappers. They always have that scouting information and would always play their second baseman right behind second. Here's the 2-2. Garcia pops one up. Right side again out of play. I say he likes to hit it up the middle and he's hit two foul balls to the right side. The Am I Not Sports Podcast. Michael Phelps in the swimming. Can't get enough of it, and I totally agree. He was insane to watch. The 2-2 is a foul off the catcher's mask of Cullen Hannigan. Hopefully he's okay. I think it went off of his mask into the mask of the home plate umpire as well, so hopefully the both of them are okay. Still a 2-2 count with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Cullen Hannigan taking a bit of a breather just to recover. But Michael Phelps, just being able to say that I saw Michael Phelps swing back in or swim excuse me back in 2008 and 2012 garcia lines this one in the right field that's a base hit lee cone's gonna score here comes frazier around third the cutoff is at first by taylor justice frazier's held up with the stop sign by walker bullington and a one out single by benito garcia gets him his first hit of the game and puts another run on the board for the sunfish a nice insurance piece here late on so that's the first hit and the first run allowed by Declan Harper in his three and two thirds innings. And out comes another mound visit for the Sabre Dogs, and that might be it for Harper. The infield is not coming in, but a pat on the back, and that'll be it for Harper. We'll see who comes in. Base is loaded with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Sunfish score a run for the first time since the fourth. And go up 6-1 to one against the Sabre Dogs. We'll return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube after this. And, well, make sure you have what your favorite Olympic sport is and put it in the chat. We might read them off.
back on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. Declan Harper's night is over. And I have a number, and I apologize, I don't have a name at the moment. But it's Chad Fox from Minnesota Duluth. Look at that. Quick as a quick as a whistle. As this one's lined in the left field by Mitch Stroh. One run's gonna score. Here comes JT Mix at home. And a first pitch to Mitch Stroh is taken in the left, and that's two more for the Sunfish. That's what happens when I get too relaxed. I fall back a little bit. Chad Fox comes in and allows a hit off of the first pitch. And Mitch Stroh, who had gone 0 for 3 prior, gets his first hit. Benito Garcia is now at second. And it's Norris McClure, who's 3 for 3 with a hit by pitch. Foul tip on the fastball into the glove of Cullen Hannigan puts McClure behind 0-1. So now Declan Harper, 3.2 innings, so 3 and 2 thirds, allowed one hit, four walks, six strikeouts. And Benito Garcia is still on second, so we might, if he scores, that'll be credited as a curveball. Stays in front of Hannigan, but got away from him. It's 1-1. One and one. So runners on first and second, bottom of the eighth inning. The Sunfish have scored three runs. They had not scored a, a run in, since the fourth inning where they had scored three as well. So they're up now 8-1. McClure swings through a changeup. It's 1-2. and two. Still the beer bat or anti-beer batter of the game, looking to go four for four. At this point, fans will get buy one, get one half off for the rest of the inning here at Karis Park. And again... Same for you guys at home. All on the voice of the Sunfish, David Coyer. A one, two. Called strike three on the inside. Fooled McClure. He goes down for the first time today, and there's no buy one, get one half. But, hey, go to the fridge and get one on me anyway. I'll buy. Strikeout number one for Chad Fox. That joke, I feel like it's starting to get a little old. I'm still getting entertainment on it. So thank you all for just moaning silently at home when I tell my dad jokes. Zeph Hoffpower grounded into a fielder's choice his last time up. Still being marked as an error. I'll have to talk about that. Foul off for strike one. That foul ball is presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, keg chicken. And our PA announcer, Ryan, just put it in the order in which, you know, I feel like it should be. I say order it, eat it, crave it, which is how the read is supposed to go. But shouldn't it be crave it, order it, eat it? The 0-1, fastball low and in, it's 1-1. One and one. Crave it, order it, eat it, because you want it. So it's like, okay, I'll go get some. You order it, and then, okay, I'll eat it now. Right? Right. One ball, one strike to Zeph off power. He's struck out twice today and had that hitter's interference all the way back early on in this game. Takes a fastball up and in. It's two and one. Two outs, two on. Sunfish now lead by seven in the bottom of the eighth inning on their way to what might be their 12th win of the second half of the season. Two and one to Hoffpower, swings and misses on the off speed. It's two and two with two outs. Still only, actually, correction, there are now nine hits for the Sunfish after the singles by Garcia and Stroh. Hoffpower fouls one off. It's still two and two. But I can't get hit Sunfish leading by seven, bottom of the eighth. The last time these two teams met, it was just one run. That would give the Sunfish their victory as they would walk it off. That Sunday a few weeks ago. Breaking ball fools off power. He watches it go by. Two strikeouts looking for the Sunfish. Chad Fox comes in and Declan Harper is just left to 
or excuse me, let's just check, make sure I got his stats right. That's right. Three runs off one hit, four walks, six strikeouts through three and two thirds. Chad Fox closes up shop here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Sunfish are taking a seven run lead going into the top of the ninth inning. Can they hold on to it or will the demons of last Sunday against the Fremont Moo come back and the Sunfish surrender the lead once more? We'll see in the top of the ninth inning when we return. Logan Hunt in his first game as a Sioux Falls Sunfish. Looking to try and get a three inning save. That's right, three innings of relief is just technically classified as a save. He'll hit a fastball in the upper corner to Cullen Hannigan, who's one for two. Or actually, we have a pinch hitter. Correction. They announced it over the speakers as I was wondering what he was saying. We'll get you who this pinch hitter is in just a moment. The 0-1, it's a curveball that's fouled off. Number 10, Jared Breedwell from the University of San Francisco is hitting for Cullen Hannigan. Hannigan will finish the night one for two with a walk and a single. He got the first hit all the way back in the fourth inning. And now Jared Breedwell is behind 0-2 as Logan Hunt steps off. From the University of San Francisco, six foot righty, batting 271 this season, down 0 2, doesn't chase a fastball high. It's 1 and 2. 13 hits, 7 RBIs, 9 walks, 10 strikeouts. Last made an appearance on Sunday, going 2 for 4 against the Pioneers, scoring thricely. That's right, thrice. I'm using it. Don't look at me that way, Sean. Here's the 1 2. Curveball drops in. Don't know where that missed. Must have been a bit outside. It's two and two. Update on the scoreboard. Yeah, it's still the bottom of the third inning, which just means that the Fremont Moon and the Western Nebraska Pioneers, excuse me, foul to the backstop. It's two and two. Correction, they just, the thing wasn't updating, and their final from Fremont, the Moo beat the Pioneers 6 nothing. I'm just going to, I guess I, did I refresh? Must not have refreshed. That's my bad, actually. The 2-2. Curveball chased outside by Breedwell. He goes down swinging, and there's one out in the top of the ninth. That is strikeout number four on the evening for Hunt, who has now retired six straight. Ethan Moore, 0 for 2 with a ground out, a fly out, and a walk. So the Fremont Moo currently two and a half games above the Sunfish as the curveball drops in inside for strike one. The Western Nebraska Pioneers now lose their third straight, fall to nine and seven. Further away from the Fremont Moo. Fastball will miss outside, it's one and one. Wheat City Whiskey Jacks in game two of the doubleheader against the Badlands Big Sticks. Lead 4-0 in the bottom of the third. 
Fastball will miss up and away. It's two and one. Bottom of the fourth from Three Legends Field. The Mining City Tommyknockers lead the Pier Trappers 2-0. While the Canyon County Spuds are up 6-2 to, to the Casper Horseheads in the bottom of the fourth from Wolf Field. Curve ball misses high. It's 3-1. and one. So once again, game one from Kraft Field. The Big Sticks beat the Whiskey Jacks 11-4. The Spuds lead the Horseheads 6-2, while the Trappers trail the Tommyknockers 2-0. And the Moo take game one against the Pioneers. 6-0. Foul tip into the glove of Declan Beers. It's a full count. Now to Ethan Moore. And in the bottom of the third in game two from Craft Field, it's the Whiskey Jacks over the Big Sticks 4-0. Of course, that's a seven-inning game being a doubleheader. The payoff pitch from Hunt. Fouled to the backstop off the fastball. 85 on the radar. One thing that Hunt does as well is while I say he starts with his glove up by his ear, he kind of squeezes it twice. Notice that as he's pitched now in his third inning. Brings it up to his ear, squeezes it twice, brings it back down to his belt before delivering. Another fastball is offered, and another fastball is fouled off. The Sunfish lead 8-1 to one in the top of the ninth inning here at Karras Park. With one out in the top of the ninth. Ethan Moore is now seeing his eighth pitch of the at-bat, and he watches it go outside for ball four. The first, or second walk issued by Logan Hunt, his first since the seventh, and his streak will end at six up, six down. We'll have another pinch hitter for the Sewers Valley Saber Dogs. And I'll let you know who it is in just a moment. Aaron Suval. Listed as a pitcher from Glendale, California Community College. 5'11 righty has a runner on with one out. He's batting 273 through three games. Three for 11. He'll take a change up for strike one. Otherwise, as a pitcher, he's appeared in 11 games, but has just hit in three of them, going three for 11. Does have a double and an RBI. He struck out four times, though. He's pinch hitting for Gunnar McGran. Fastball jams him inside. So no balls, two strikes with one out and a runner on first. McGran would finish the day 0 for 3. Hunt setting out the chest, kicking and delivering. Gets a chase on the breaking ball outside, and on three pitches, Suval goes down swinging. Two strikeouts here in the ninth, and the Sunfish are down to their last out, or one out away, rather, of getting their first win since Friday. Logan Hunt, in his first outing, has five strikeouts. It's Reese Anderson, who does, technically does not have an at-bat tonight. He falls off the first pitch he sees. And now our PA guy, Ryan, is just having fun. He says, eat it, crave it, order it. For keg chicken, order it, eat it, crave it. That's what we're sticking with. It just, it's just what we've said, and if I said something else, I'd stumble over it. Anderson has walked twice and was hit by a pitch. He grounds one through the hole at second for his first hit of the ball game, and he's one for one tonight. Two out single is the first hit allowed by Logan Hunt. And now there's two on with two out in the top of the ninth. The Sunfish still lead eight to one. We flip the lineup card over and it's Declan Buckle who's 0 for 3. Lined out, grounded out, struck out. He was hit by a pitch on the first pitch of the ball game.
Two outs. Ball one to Declan Buckle. Hunt checks back at second before delivering the second pitch. Change up will hit the lower outside corner. It's one and one. One ball, one strike, two on, two out here in the top of the ninth. Hunt double checks back at second before hitting Declan Buckle on the shoulder. So twice Buckle has been hit, and now the bases are loaded here in the ninth inning. Sunfish are still up 8-1. to one. Ethan Moore is now at third. Reese Anderson at second with Buckle at first. It's Alan Greer stepping up to the plate for the Sabre Dogs. Greer. There's a pair of ground outs and a strikeout. Has the only RBI on the night. Fastball's called away. It's 1-0. Oh. He had a sack fly all the way back in the fifth inning. Officially 0 for 3 tonight. Swings at a fastball away. A foul tip. It's 1 and 1. The Sunfish pull this one off. They will improve to 12 and 6 in the second half. 26 and 23 on the season. A one and one is fouled off. Running on the pitch was Declan Buckle from first. That was a confusing as why he was running. It was a one and one count with two outs. If Declan Beers really wanted to, he could have thrown it over to first. Half power wasn't covering, but I digress. One ball, two strikes from Hunt. Kicks and delivers. Throws a breaking ball in the left-handed batter's box. Taken for ball two. Two's across the board. We got Deuces Wild. Let's go. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. We get our first Deuces Wild, or at least the first that I was paying attention for, as Alan Greer is number two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Logan Hunt with the pitch. Misses high. It's a full count. Runners will go on the pitch. In his first outing as a sunfish, Hunt has not allowed a run yet. Took until his third inning of work to allow his first hit. The payoff popped up. Shallow right field. Thompson coming in near the line will let it fall in foul territory. He has to stop himself on the fencing of the sunfish bullpen. So Greer will have another go at it. Hoff Power didn't budge at first. JT Mix was running over, trying to get a play on it as well. So it'll be three balls, two strikes, two outs to Alan Greer. Sabre Dogs only scored their one run in the fifth. So I've gone three scoreless since with a combination of Andrew Garcia and Logan Hunt. Here's the payoff. Taken away on the fastball, and there's the first run scored since the fifth and the first allowed by Logan Hunt as a sunfish. A one-out walk led to striking out Aaron Suval, then a two-out single to Reese Anderson put two on. A hit-by-pitch to Declan Buckle. Put the bases loaded, and now Buckles out at second. Greer's at first on the walk, and it'll be Taylor Justice 0 for 3 on the night. Only two hits for the Sabre Dogs throughout this contest. Fastball will miss low. It's 1 and 0. Walker Bullington stepping out of the dugout, looking down at the bullpen. All he's got is his hands on his hips, staring down there. 
Not sure if he was trying to communicate anything or just see if he can get someone warm in case Hunt starts to struggle a little bit. Here's the 1-0. Pass ball away. It's 2-0. No one is warming up in the Sunfish bullpen. There's three guys down there. I can't tell who they all are. I think it's Walker just checking on who he might need to go with. The 2-0, low and in, it's 3-0. Sunfish still lead by six. It's eight to two here in the top of the ninth. They gave up four in the top of the ninth on Sunday. That would just make it a three-run ball game tonight. Here's the 3-0, up and away, and Logan Hunt has now walked two across here in the top of the ninth inning. Walker Bullington will have to go to his bullpen. He is calling for someone. So after allowing only one walk through two and in, two innings, two and a third innings, Logan Hunt has now walked three, hit one, and allowed his first hit. He'll get a round of applause as he walks off the field, and it'll be Pete Weil making his first appearance since hurting his foot a couple weeks ago coming on the mound. We'll step away as Pete quickly warms up. The Sunfish still lead by five, but with the bases loaded and two outs, it's a dangerous at-bat coming up in the form of Drew Miller when we return. Logan Hunt won't get the save as he's been taken out of this game. It's Pete Weil from the University of North Georgia. Haven't seen him since June 27th when he got the five-inning win against the Hastings Sodbusters. Pete had been dealing with a lower leg injury. I think it was his ankle or foot. But now he's back. He rehabbed it a little bit. Has been throwing a bit on it. He said it's been feeling good, and he's back. The 6-2 righty making his eighth appearance of the season. One save, 19 innings pitched, 19 and a third innings pitched, 13 strikeouts, nine walks. Barrels this one up is Drew Miller, but he pulled it just too far. That was all the way over the wall. Pete Wilde is a ground ball pitcher. Loves forcing the ground balls. And it was against Pierre on June 15th where he was come in or brought in on a similar situation, just needed to close out a game. And the first two batters he faced just barreled up the ball. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss on the off speed. And, well, he's not making the same mistake twice to Drew Miller. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The Sunfish lead by five with the bases loaded. Wow. 
Vile sets. Does his three taps. Five taps, rather. Delivers. A pitch that misses at the knees. It's one and two. Logan Hunt in his first outing as a Sunfish. Two and two-thirds innings. Allowed just one hit, two runs, four walks, five strikeouts. The one-two. Popped up down the left field line, hooking into the beer garden. It's the last foul ball tonight. That will be presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. Last one, I promise. So four pitches now thrown. Three of them strikes from Weil. Let's see if he can get that strike three. 88 mile an hour fastball outside. It's two and two. Looking good in his first outing back. Doesn't appear that the foot or ankle's bothering him. Have to ask him about the game, how he's feeling afterwards. Two and two, two outs, bases loaded, top of the ninth. Sunfish still up by five against the Sabre Dogs. The 2 2 is popped up out of play. Good at bat by Drew Miller, who's one for four tonight. Had his double in the sixth inning for lining out in the eighth. He's down to his last strike, is Miller. Declan Buckle at third, Alan Greer at second, Taylor Justice at first. Pete Weil sets and delivers. Swing and a miss, got him to chase. Foul tip actually on the fastball outside. Final pitch, 9.51. 9.51, your final pitch. Three hours and 14 minutes on this contest. The Sunfish get the win and are remain two games behind Fremont, who shut out the Western Nebraska Pioneers earlier this evening. Two runs cross in the ninth inning to give the Sabre Dogs three. Two hits, one error for the Sabre Dogs. And left on base will give you a count in just a moment. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Left on base for the Sabre Dogs, the Sunfish. Eight runs off nine hits, no errors. A clean slate for the Sunfish tonight. They leave two on in the eighth to make it two, four, six, eight left on base. Your winning pitcher, Andrew Garcia. Fresh off of his save in the All-Star game, gets another win on the season. That marks Andrew's seventh. He improves to seven and one. The most by any Sunfish pitcher on the season, seven and one. The losing pitcher, Shane Sinclair. Sinclair falls tonight in three and two thirds innings pitched. Allowed seven hits, five runs, three walks, five strikeouts. Sinclair on the season for the Suris Valley Sabre Dogs. I will quick check to what he falls to. Sorry, give me one second. Probably should have that on hand, shouldn't I? But I don't. Apologies. He falls to two and two on the season. No save tonight. Again, the final attendance, just 44 here on Thursday. But the Sunfish improved to 11, or 12, excuse me, and six. 26 and 23 on the season as a whole. Still two games behind the Fremont Moo, who improved to 14 and four with their third straight win coming out of the All-Star break. The Sabre Dogs fall to 11 and seven for their first loss since winning two against the Western Nebraska Pioneers. They're still on top of the Lewis division. The Sunfish and Sabre Dogs have three more this weekend at Karis Park. Come on out or tune in to the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. 635 first pitch all weekend on the radio network and the live stream and live from Karis Park. 635 first pitch, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday between the Sunfish and the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. The Sunfish take game one, winning eight runs, nine hits, no errors, eight left on base, while the Sabre Dogs can only accumulate three runs, two of which came in the ninth. 
two hits, one of which came in the ninth, and one error with 10 left on base. Andrew Garcia improves to 7-1, and one, while Shane Sinclair in his third start as a Sabre Dog falls to 2-2. Two and two. Final time of the game, 3-14, three, 3 hours and 14 minutes. For everyone here at the Sioux Falls Sunfish organization, I'm David Coyer. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night, 635 First Pitch. Also, listen to The Fish Tank on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. This week was your winning pitcher, Andrew Garcia, with myself and Walker. Tune into that. For everyone at the Sunfish organization, I'm David Coyer. Have a good night, and go fish!